right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our August 19th meeting of the board. Uh, all members are present with the exception of Mr. De Palma, who's notified me he'll be unable to attend. Uh, we have just adjourned an executive session for the purpose of discussing strategies with respect to collective bargaining as it relates to the International Association of Firefighters, Local 1370, in accordance with Mass General Law 30A, Section, you can hear me? Okay, good. 21A3. I think, the, just to be clear, the microphones are for the cameras at home, correct? Uh, that black microphone there is for the Yes. And so coming to this meeting, we're going to have to How about our in-person guests? Is the speak can you guys hear the speakers? No. No. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Testing one, two, three. All right, I'll try a little bit close. Uh, Firefighters Local 1370 in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Subsection 3. Also, negotiations with non personnel finance director in accordance with Mass General Law 30A, Section 21A, Subsection 2. And also, to review and consider release of executive session minutes from February 10, 2020. March 8, 2021, and November 13th of 2023. Would everyone kindly join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you very much. And once again, good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here with us. And for those watching at home, good evening. Uh, we'll start with Treasury uh, transmitting of Treasury warrants. First, we have Treasury warrants 2503, 2503W, 2503T, 2503S, 2501W, 2501T, 2505, 2505W, 2505T, 2505S, 2506, 2506W, 2506T, 2507, 2507W, 2507T, and 2507S. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Mr. Slagle? Uh, with respect to uh, Treasury Warrant number 2504, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. A motion made and seconded. All in favor? That's 3-0. Thank you, sir. Next up is the approval of minutes from our meeting of July 15, 2024. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Kyrie. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. West. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, our first appointment this evening is, and if they're here in the room, please feel free to come forward, is with Justin Miranda, who's the manager uh, of Curve of Restro. This is a public hearing on the request to amend a flammable license at the property located at 730 Main Street. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you? Thank you. I'm just going to open the public hearing, and then I'll allow you to introduce yourself, and we'll get, uh, get down to business, okay? Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, would anybody like, this is a public hearing, if anybody would like to make a motion to open the public hearing, please. Thank you, Mr. Carr. Second. second. Seconded by Ms. Vaselli. All those in favor? Thank you. The public hearing is now open at 712. Sir, good evening. Thank you for being here. It's my understanding you're here to obtain an, um, uh, a flammable license for the property located at 730. If you don't mind, for the record, just identifying yourself. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Justin Miranda, the HSE manager, safety manager for uh, Profestro here in Wilmington. They are a manufacturer of uh, polyurethanes and resins. As part of that manufacturing process, we do utilize some uh, flammable materials that we keep in bulk storage. So what I'm here today to request of the uh, selectmen is an, uh, an increase in that, and this would actually be an administrative increase. 
So our physical inventory isn't actually increasing for our site. Uh, at the request of the State Department of Fire Safety, they did ask for us to account for our, what we refer to as our true operating volume, which would include any of the uh, pipes that go from our bulk storage vessels to the production vessels. So we gave ourselves a buffer of about 10%, and that was at the recommendation of the state. So this uh, license would just reflect that. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. Slagle, we have recommendations from departments? Uh, we do. We have uh, a recommendation from the, the building department has no issues with the application, um, and uh, the Office of Town Clerk has no objection to amending the flammable license. They're in good standing with the clerk's office. Okay, thank you. Skyra. For the chair to, to um, town manager Slagle, is there a recommendation from the fire department? Because on the memo, we're expecting to have three recommendations. And for me, having a recommendation from the fire department is one of the, the most important. Um, That's right. yeah. And I don't see it when we're talking about so no, I think Yeah, No, I... I yeah, he, he signed the application, yeah. so didn't provide a separate recommendation. That's fine. If you'll see, page two. yeah, page two, uh, signed off by William Cavanaugh at the bottom of page two of the application. Sig and with a signature, with a check mark by approval. Anybody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Yeah, excuse me. Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you, Mr. West. Would, uh, okay. Seeing that this is a public hearing, uh, would anyone like to be heard on this application? Not all at once. Okay. Uh, thank you. As stated, uh, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Thank Second. You. Seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, call for the vote. Public hearing is now closed at 7.15. And now, would anybody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Uh, second, and is there any discussion? <laughs> hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Application is granted. Thank you very Thank much you. for your time. Thank you, Have sir. Have a good night. Have a great night. Okay. Have a good night, sir. Thank you. Our second appointment, Mr. Slagle. Late breaking news. Yes, with respect to our 710 appointment for Edith A. Rodriguez, uh, Delilah's Corporation doing business as Peter's Roast Beef, a request to obtain a common victuals license for the property located at 2 Lowell Street. Uh, they have requested uh, this to be withdrawn. Um, as there's a, an issue in the process of the transfer of the title of the property. So they've withdrawn that for the time being. We don't know. All right. Hopefully we'll see them in the future. Just want to double check with WCTV at this time. Can you hear us okay? Anything I can do better? As it relates to the mic? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. We will move on to our next appointment. Uh, and before we do so, I would like to invite, we'll pause here, I then invite the chairs of the respective committees uh, to call their committees to order before we have any discussion and hear the presentation. So uh, if there's a quorum present, I'll give the opportunity for the chairs to call themselves into order. Sounds good. Is there a second? Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Chairman Fenley, thank you very much. Uh, you good? You need a roll call? You good? Okay. How about the Finance Committee? I believe Mr. Doherty online. I see. Uh, couple members of the finance committee here one two three I don't know if that's a quorum I don't think so we might be safe there we're safe 
All right, how about the, um, I think that's it. School building committee. We don't have a, all right. Just checking to be safe here. All right, I think everything else is in order, so everyone's safe to uh, have great conversation, I hope. Okay, uh, with that, thank you for that. I want to again welcome everybody who I, I believe is here for this uh, next presentation. And I want to uh, thank our colleagues on the school committee for being here. Uh, our, our colleagues on the finance committee who are here in the room and remotely. Uh, our, our, my colleagues on the building committee, those of you who are here, good evening. Our assistant town manager, Judy O'Connell is here. Uh, our superintendent of schools, Glenn Brand is here. Our assistant superintendent of schools, Paul Ruggiero is here. And uh, also we have our uh, colleagues from Door Whittier who are gonna be giving us a presentation in just a few moments. And um, obviously, also our, our neighbors and uh, from here in town, uh, the residents who have come to hear the presentation. So I'm gonna turn it over to our town manager in just a moment, but we wanted to take this opportunity to get everybody into the same room and see the presentation, ask questions, have discussion, and get uh, have another opportunity to get feedback from folks on the presentation, which I had the opportunity to see, opportunity to see Friday in a little bit as I was getting dressed uh, to come here this evening. The school committee met a short while ago and I caught a few minutes of that as well. So um, that's our intent. I wanna be upfront that there is no vote being taken tonight as it relates to this uh, presentation, uh, but my intentions are to open it up for public comment uh, for folks who wanna give us some feedback. So we're gonna skip ahead uh, to that on the agenda. I don't wanna make anybody wait if you've come for this presentation. I wanna be fair and respectful of your time. So if you would like to have uh, give a comment at the end of the presentation, then I, I welcome your comment. Um, and so I think I got everything on my notes. Uh, this time I turn it over to our town manager, Mr. Eric Slagle. Slagle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, as the, the chair had noted, we're here uh, today to have a presentation from our, our project architect um, regarding the, uh, uh, the Wilmington's Elementary School uh, MSBA project right now. Um, uh, I, I I think I echo the, the sentiments of the chair when I say the goal of this is to provide as much information to the community as possible. So while there are, I'm certain there are members here uh, who are on the, the, the school building committee who've already seen this presentation multiple times, members of the school committee saw this presentation I think literally an hour ago. Um, uh, this, the, the goal is to have this outreach provided to uh, the, the public. So, um, uh, after the presentation is completed, uh, we would have, I believe the chair will be opening up the questions to the members of the various committees that are here uh, to ask questions. Um, uh, the, the goal, I believe, should be to try to make a determination as to whether or not there's, there's information that we need to make a final decision on our preferred option. Um, uh, the, our architects have worked very hard with SMMA, our, our uh, OPM, as well as the school building committee to come up with the, uh, the information that you're gonna see in this presentation. Um, we, we believe it provides the information that the community would need to make a determination, and more importantly, the, the information that the members of the school building committee will need to make a final uh, a determination on the preferred option to present to the state uh, later on this year. Um, so uh, I, I would like to turn it over to our architects. Um, and um, uh, let them go forward with the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And so just for the record, we have uh, Mr. Lee Dorr here and uh, Ms. Phillips, right? So thank you so much, Ronnie, for being here as well. we'll at this time, we'll turn it over to you both. Well, thank you all, and thanks for having us here. We really appreciate the opportunity to share an update on the project. So today we'll, we'll walk through um, quick introductions, look at the MSBA process, uh, review um, the preliminary design program, which is the previous phase of where we are, and then give an update on our current phase, which is the preferred schematic phase. Um, and then we'll cover a little bit about the community outreach that has been done to date. The town of Wilmington and the school committee have partnered with the MSBA to pursue a project centered around the Wildwood Early Childhood Center. The school building committee 
was formed and proceeded to procure the project team. SMMA is the owner's project manager and Durham Woodier as the project designers. There's a defined process that we follow when partnering with the MSBA. First, the district must determine which school is in most need. With schools of similar vintage, Wilmington continues to maintain critical building systems such as HVAC and roofing. However, it doesn't change the fact that all the elementary schools are older, inefficient, and approaching the end of their expected life. Wildwood Early Childhood Center was determined to be the most in need. With the MSBA, there was an agreement for, to study three enrollments to include the Wildwood School, which would have 130 kindergarten students plus about 100 pre-K students. A look at a pre-K three configuration, which would include the Wildwood and Woburn Street schools. And then a pre-K five grade configuration which would include the Wildwood, Woburn Street, and North Intermediate Schools. Wildwood was accepted into the MSBA program in April of 2021. The MSBA process is divided into eight modules as shown on the screen. Each module is a checkpoint with the MSBA before proceeding to the next phase. We are currently in module three, feasibility study. Module three feasibility study has two phases, preliminary design program, which we often refer to as PDP, and then preferred schematic, which we often refer to as PSR. We completed the PDP in April, documenting the discovery process with facility reviews, educational analysis and vision, and developing 18 options. Along the way, our ongoing working group meetings and public meetings scheduled with findings and updates that are reported. The focus of the preferred schematic is to continue our due diligence to further develop the program and conceptual designs to have more detail in the next round of estimating. All the information will help inform a decision towards one preferred alternative. A preferred option is voted on by both MSBA and the Town of Wilmington to continue forward with a desired project. Once project funding is, appro is approved, the design is then developed for construction. In the first phase of feasibility, the design team evaluated the existing school facilities and sites that are a part of this project. We reviewed three school locations, Wildwood, Woburn Street, and North Intermediate to understand the potential limitations and opportunities at each location. In general, the buildings were of similar vintage, but the sizes of the sites vary. This became evident when we began the site design and layouts for the multiple options studied and will be shared later in this presentation. We assessed current conditions of the buildings and sites and this snapshot of the results scored give you an understanding of how each school compared to the others. As expected from buildings of similar vintage, scores are not that far apart. In general, North Intermediate had more updates to the building and scored higher than Woburn Street and Wildwood schools. Using this information, the design team generated a list of repair items and code requirements that is referred to as capital improvements to extend the life of the buildings for the next 50 years. This is the basis for the repair only options we will discuss later. In summary, the facilities are maintained and currently operational. However, inevitable infrastructure upgrades may be limited without a major project to meet current codes and ideally the educational vision in Wilmington. The next step was to define the project needs through a series of eight visioning sessions and over 50 participants represented the district and community, administrators, staff, town representatives, seniors, parents, and students. The outcome of the visioning sessions was to create the guiding principles for the project. We developed a summary of spaces for a proposed project that would meet both the building and educational needs for each enrollment study and developed 15 alternatives at four sites for review, all three school sites, as well as the town hall site. <clears throat> there are also three repair only options for a total of 18 options studied. The work proposed and the repair only alternatives are not just cosmetic, but look to extend the infrastructure of the buildings and meet current codes as well. 
individual items on the list may not trigger codes. However, several smaller projects or even one larger scale project will trigger code upgrades and are included in each of these alternatives. However, these options do not add square footage to address the space needs within the district. The SBC or school building committee evaluated the 18 options using eight categories with criteria within each. The school building committee's goal at the end of the preliminary design program phase was to shortlist the options. Four options were studied for pre-KK enrollment. A new pre-KK at Wildwood scored the highest of the alternatives considered. The repair only option uh, must move forward uh, to the next phase and will serve as a baseline for the project. Six options were studied for the pre-K-3 alternative. A new pre-K-3 at Woburn Street scored the highest of all of these options considered. The repair only option would move forward to the next phase and serve as a comparison as well. Eight options were studied for pre-K-5. A new pre-K-5 at North scored highest of the alternatives considered. The repair only option would also move forward to the next phase as a baseline. And then one ad rental option must move forward to the next phase and the pre-K-5 at North scored the highest of all the addition renovation options studied uh, within the grade configuration. Based on the scoring, these seven alternatives were shortlisted to move forward in the, into the PSR phase, the preferred schematic, which we are in right now. At the conclusion of PDP, the three grade configurations and four sites were explored. The size of the buildings were generated to satisfy the educational programming established. 18 options evaluated with the matrix and estimated. The shortlisted options were the front runners in the evaluation matrix for each enrollment and type of project to move into the phase um, with projects ranging from 26 million for a repair only pre-KK option to 215 million for a pre-K-5 new construction option. The PDP submission to the MSBA in April included seven options for further study that were shortlisted. Um, the pre-K-K repair only and new construction alternatives, the pre-K-3 and pre-K-5 repair only options were carried for cost comparison only as it does not include the pre-KK population, which is a requirement for any project that moves forward. A pre-K-3 and pre-K-5 new construction alternatives also move forward for further study. One pre-K-5 renovation addition option was also shortlisted. Comments from MSBA included carrying pre-KK and the pre-K-3 renovation addition options for cost comparison as well, which are circled in red. This concluded with nine options for further review in the PSR phase, four of which were for cost comparison. Similar to the preliminary design phase, we refined the shortlisted options in the preferred schematic phase with questions in mind. Can we accomplish the goals that were set and how can we do it better? Our first step was to review and confirm the educational program and space needs. Adjustments to the pre-K classroom count and music art programs reduced square footage slightly across the board as highlighted in purple. The pre-K five N one is a new construction of a three story building located behind the existing building on the North intermediate site. In PSR, the floor plans were refined to adjust the layout based on programmatic changes and improve public and private zones adjacencies and travel distances for safety and code. This option included a larger 12,000 square foot gymnasium in the program. The north site has access to municipal utilities and the buildings can be constructed with minimal disruption to the existing building. North intermediate students can move into the new building once constructed and the existing building would be demolished to finish site work. Once completed, the remaining pre-K three students would occupy the building. For each of the options studied, we also generated um, feedback from our meeting with public safety officials and generated grading, um, improved circulation during daily use and during emergencies. At the North Intermediate site, for example, we accomplished uh, complete bus and vehicle separation 
and an alternative pickup option to accommodate more vehicles queuing on site if needed. Although a traffic study will be completed for the preferred site in the next phase schematic design, experience informs us that moving vehicles off roadways and onto the site reduces the impact of traffic to the neighborhood during peak hours. The Pre-K-5 ad renovation option includes renovations and additions resulting in a four-story building on the North Intermediate site. This option also includes the larger 12,000 square foot gymnasium in the program. Construction would have significant disruption to the operation of the existing school. Renovations and additions are phased, requiring students and staff to relocate around the building as needed to complete work at each phase. Once completed, the remaining pre-K-3 students would occupy the building. The pre-K-3 new option is new construction of a two-story building located just north of the existing building on the Woburn Street site. From High Street, the building would appear to be a single-story building, taking advantage of the grade change with pre-K and K located at the lower level. The pre-K-3 options include a 6,000 square foot gymnasium. This new option has significant retaining walls to accommodate circulation and field areas noted by the thick black lines. The site is connected to the town water but requires a septic system. The dash line to the left of the proposed building is a classroom wing that projects over the access road. This provides covered play area during school hours. Buses and emergency vehicles pass under this portion of the building when utilizing the access road. Construction would disrupt the operation of the existing school as access roads and temporary parking would be required to construct the building. Students and staff would relocate relocate to the new building to allow for demolition of the existing buildings and site work completion. Pre-KK students would then occupy the new building. The Pre-K-3 AR1 option includes renovations and additions resulting in a three-story building on the Woburn Street site. Similar to the new construction option, retaining walls are required to navigate the grades on site and construction would include disruption to the operation of the existing school, circulation and parking. The new additions would be constructed first then renovations to the existing buildings. Once completed, the remaining pre-KK students would occupy the building. Pre-KK N1 includes new construction of a single story building on the Wildwood site. This option was refined since the PDP phase improving public and private zones within the building. As the site is unoccupied, no phasing is required and retaining walls and a new septic system are required to accomplish this alternative. Pre-KK AR1 includes renovations and additions for a single story building on the Wildwood site. Similar to the new alternative, no phasing is needed, but retaining walls and a new septic system are required to accomplish this alternative. The shortlisted options were evaluated against the same eight categories from the previous phase uh, for continuity. This includes education, site, restrictions and future uses, community, sustainability, construction logistics, total time to address all needs, and consolidation. The overall scoring was consistent with PDP findings, even with adjustments based on revised layouts and site development. The highest scoring alternative is a new pre-K-5 school at the North Intermediate site, followed by pre-K-5 at Reno and the new pre-K-3 at the Woburn Street site. The shortlisted options were estimated in July. Things to keep in mind include that these are estimates to compare the relative cost between options. There are order of magnitude costs, not exact cost analysis or determinations of final cost. And since the first estimate, some costs went up while others went down, but ultimately are in similar range. So what changed? The adjustments from PDP to PSR include a reduction in the building cost because program square footage was reduced in this phase. In general, site costs were the greater impact in that the PDP costs were based on a percentage of the building square footage. In PSR, costs reflect a more detailed site plan, including site features, amenities, and additional grading information for estimating. And then construction soft costs are a percent function of costs and adjust up or down accordingly. The numbers have shifted in both directions depending on the option. Overall, the updated project costs either increased or decreased by three to 6% in the pre-KK and pre-K-3 alternatives. 
the pre-K-5 options had a more significant decrease at 8%. One example for this is that the north site does not have a significant grade change in the need for substantial retaining walls that Woburn and Wildwood Street sites would need. To help put these numbers into perspective, the MSBA shares historical and current cost data for projects on their website. The Wilmington High School data is shared as it is the most recent project for Wilmington. The list on the right reflects the cost per square foot for current and future high school projects. The increase in cost is due to escalation over the last several years, as well as meeting updated codes, including the energy code. When we look closer at the projects currently in the feasibility and schematic design phases with MSBA, the costs per square foot are closer in range with an average of $789 per square foot. The best way to evaluate these are by cost per square foot since the enrollments and sites vary for each of these projects. This Wilmington project falls right in the middle of the range. This is a snapshot of the nine options with the cost studied in PSR. We took a look at the five options shortlisted at PDP to give you an idea on the potential cost impact to the community. After considering scope eligible for MSBA reimbursement, the numbers on the screen reflect the local share of the project. MSBA has caps on certain items such as site, this impacts the local share and the smaller delta with Wildwood and Woburn sites as compared to the North Intermediate site. To understand the potential total local share to address the pre-K-5 population within this project, we have added the cost of the repair only options to the alternatives. For example, if a pre-K -K option is selected as the preferred option, it would not address any needs at the Woburn Street or North Intermediate sites. As we do not know when those projects would happen, we have included the total cost for those repair projects. A new pre-KK option for 69.7 million would total to 149 million once the Woburn and North projects are added, since it is completed in three separate projects for the town. A pre-K three project would result in two projects for the town. Aside from the pre-KK repair only option, the pre-K-5 options are somewhat less expensive since the pre-K-5 population would be addressed within one project. The town has generated the estimated tax impact um, and we have that information to share next. The midpoint of the estimated ranges for the following projects was used to calculate the projected local share. On an average home, the annual tax impact can be between $160 to $730. The monthly impact range is $13 to $61. The project has worked to keep the community um, up to date on all the uh, progress that's been happening with the project. These are just a couple of examples of the outreach efforts. They include public meetings, uh, informational um, flyers that have been sent out uh, via the water bill, newsletters, um, interviews on the Wildcat Corner. Um, there's senior center presentations that are ongoing. Um, Fun at the Fourth, which will have some results from a survey uh, coming up. Uh, information posted on the school website um, with FAQs and then display boards around town, as well as ta townwide communications on the project. We just recently completed uh, community form number four, but the um, surveys are still open for that, but we are going to provide you the updates from community form number three. We had a little over 30 people respond during the community forum, and with each of the forms, we've left our um, platform open so that people can continue to view the presentations and provide input afterwards. So afterwards, we had about 95 responders. So more than half of them identified as parents as part of um, the survey. <clears throat> and then overall, the preferences indicated pre-K-5 as the preferred configuration and also new construction options were preferred over repair only or at rental alternatives. 
Also, at Fun on the Fourth, there was a survey that was completed with many volunteers that participated to um, uh, keep a booth available um, at over the multiple days. And some of the questions that included in that were included in the survey were: Do you currently have school-aged children or relatives in the school system? And 89 of the responders um, responded that they did. Are you in favor of school consolidation? A majority has voted yes. When asked to rank the options, the pre-K-5 new at North option was the highest ranking. And then we also um, asked if there was a larger gymnasium in the project and if that was supported um, by the community, even if MSBA reimbursement would only cover half of that. And the majority of them said yes. As far as staying connected to the project, um, all of the information is provided on the district website. Um, there is also a FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions section, as questions arise that's consistently being updated. And then there's also an email address where um, anyone can set, submit an email for um, review and then we try to post those and that's what's helped generate the FAQ questions. And that's our update, so thank you. And Great. open it back to you. <laughs> thank you very much, Ronnie. That was very, very informative, a very nice presentation, obviously uh, very, very clear. So thank you, and I appreciate your willingness to be here. I know it's been a long day. Second time you presented this today. If I had to guess, you probably rehearsed this morning too. So I really appreciate that. And I know um, you are gonna stick around, and, and, and I appreciate your willingness to answer questions. So thank you. I also wanted just a couple of administrative things here. The presentation will be available on our website tomorrow. Uh, so folks at home who are watching, or if you want to access it, you can. We do have a couple printed copies over here at the table. So if you're in person, you want to take a look, you're welcome to, uh, to grab one. We have a couple printed copies here. I, I do want to give a big shout out to our friends at WCTV and our town IT department who set this all up. This is not my favorite room to hold a meeting in, uh, but uh, they did a great job setting us up so that we could have this. We didn't know how many people would come, so we wanted to make sure that everybody could be comfortable. Um, so thank you, and, and again, thank you to all the volunteer committees that are here. Uh, I wanna extend a courtesy and give you the opportunity to, to you know, make a comment or ask a question, and I really appreciate all of your volunteerism. Most of you have been working on this for a very long time, and I really appreciate you being here tonight, because I think it's so important that we're all together in the same room give the opportunity for folks to ask questions and give feedback and for us to hear it in person. So with that, what I'd like to do is start with my colleagues here on the board. If they are inclined, they have a question or a comment uh, for Doran Whittier, for the town manager, or anybody else who might be here. Mr. Yeah. Sella. <clears throat> Thank you for the presentation, it was great. Um, I haven't heard and wondering, have you pulled the teachers in town? Um, you know, we have a handful that obviously live in town, probably more than a handful probably the majority don't, but I'd be curious to know how the teachers, especially at the, at the elementary level or pre-K through five, what their thoughts are on, you know, the presentation and, you know, what they think is the best option, you know, as a teacher. I, I, can, I think I can start with an answer with that and maybe Dr. Brandt can help me out with some of his interaction with staff. A, a big part of what we do is interacting with the staff and the students. Right. And so part of one of the slides that was up there had to do with our visioning session. We had eight sessions and 50 participants. And that was for us really to kind of truth test what the future programs in Wilmington should be, right? What, what has been in place, what's working, what's not working. You know, how can we better position ourselves to educate students? Times have changed since these buildings obviously were designed. Uh, so we took in all of that feedback, and it was also from parents uh, mm -hmm. and interested community members that were a part of those sessions. So we synthesized all of that information along with the set of guidelines that MSBA provides us for all of their standards and sizes for different programs. And that's how we came up with the square footage and the programs. And then we took that information, went back again, mm -hmm. and said, this is the information that we've got. Can we kind of get into this in a little bit more detail to really decide what are wants and what are needs? And that was really our focus during this recent phase of the project. And the result of that was we were able to get some efficiencies in the project. 
really challenge and test the schedules that were being involved because talking about consolidation, it's a much different scheduling system than what you have today. As a result of that, we were able to save some square footage on the project, <clears throat> refine those plans, and I know that the district has taken those plans and reviewed them again with staff at the close of the school year. Um, and so my understanding is that the feedback has been pretty positive. There's a mixed bag depending on what option you're talking about. So for us, the really important piece is what you're talking about, though, is that feedback from the staff, for us to understand where you are now and where we're trying to go and trying to come up with you know, the square footages so we can eventually get you costs and eventually get local shares. So this, the programs that we are in front of you today have gone through that process. They meet MSBA standards. They meet what the challenge was that was given to us was find a solution that will work in any of these configurations. Right. So the programs that we've developed will work for a pre-K solution if that's what the time wants to move forward, or pre-K three or pre-K five. They certainly have differences amongst them, both long term and short term. So technically I think we found potential solutions for any of these scenarios. Now it's trying to find out what is the best fit for Wilmington now and in the long term. And that's really what we're here trying to solve. Great, and just a couple of quick ones. Please. So um, the pre-K through five at the north, I'm assuming, so I don't want to assume, that's why I'm asking, is it that site because it's, it's larger, it's 14 acres compared to 7.3, and obviously it's just a better, you know, footage, square footage and uh, placement for that type of school as opposed to say the Wildwood? <clears throat> we, we came in and there was four sites under consideration, the three existing sites for school and we added the town hall site. And there was, there was lots of debate over the last year about including the town hall site or not. Ultimately, we thought it was in our best interest for the town to do the due diligence and do test fits for those. The reason that the, the option and one at the North Street works the best is multifaceted. It's not just because it's the largest site. A lot of it has to do with the placement of the building on the site. It's a big building. Yeah. Um, we looked at pre-K to five at the Wildwood site, right? And you can imagine you know, that size on a postage stamp site, it you know, took up everything and it's really tall and yeah. it just doesn't feel the right place. So we spent a lot of time trying to be cognizant of abutters, you know, where we were placing things. Uh, and that site lent itself nicely in the fact that we could keep the, the existing school up and operational to try and, obviously if there's a construction site on a school site, there's gonna be a disruption, but it minimizes that impact. It also placed the building kind of in the center of that site, so it wasn't <clears throat> directly on any particular uh, a group of abutters that were taking you know, the primary hit for that. It was centralized. The circulation was a big piece of mm -hmm. what we we're doing at all of these sites. Traffic, obviously, here is a big consideration of what we're doing. We only had the financial resources to go out and do the testing for one site. It's right. a pretty big number to go out and do all the testing that we need across. So we're trying to be risk adverse mm -hmm. as we're doing this, but because of cognizant of the money that's involved. So when we do pick a preferred option, we will go to that site and do all of the soils testing, all the traffic engineering, but knowing that, that going into that, that we weren't gonna have that information. We looked at each of these sites with traffic in mind. So you saw all of the, the plans and the site plans. We worked hard to try and figure out how we can get as many of the cars off the road and send them around that site. And that's the, the number one thing a traffic study tells us. Get them all off the site and get them onto that particular school site. There might be off-site mitigation efforts with street signs and stuff that needs to happen. You know, we'll get that information as part of it but there's a lot that goes into the site selection. And you can see by all the different pieces of the matrix that we found, you know, site I think had eight different items that we scored yeah. against that. And North just proved out, not by a huge margin, but proved out to be the best for looking at holistically all of the different things that we were looking at. Great, and my last, this is a quick question, it's kind of off, but how often, uh, when would we be eligible to go for another? I know we haven't even gotten to the end of this, but how often can we apply for MSBA grants? So let's just say this is completed. How long, and I know we have to be approved, but when does the window reopen for us to go for another grant? Sure. You, you started this process by submitting what was called a statement of interest mm -hmm. um, for the school that was identified at Wildwood as your priority. Every year, MSBA accepts statements of interest, and the town is certainly able to submit new statements of interest you know, for the west side 
okay. projects that's as was, well. That's what I was inquiring about. The, the trick is when or when not you do get accepted into the program. Right, right. Typically, MSBA will reimburse for kind of one project at a time sure. in the district. There has been precedent where there have been several projects in a community that start not at the same time, but at different times. I, I don't think we're looking to do that, but I was just curious yeah. if there so was a... The, you know, we had to wait five years or something like that. So typically it, it, it's done when you complete one project, yeah. you've submitted some statements of interest, they've gone successfully in MSBA. Okay. You're really kind of up against your surrounding communities as far as need. Right, right? Right. And every year they kind of wipe the slate clean and it's based okay. on needs and priorities. Right. That's great. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. Thank you, Ms. Basile. Mr. West. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for the presentation. I, I guess a couple of things that concern me is when I first got on this board a little over a year and a half ago, about a year and a half ago, we called this the Wildwood Early Education Center Project. And it really has not a lot to do with the Wildwood School. I mean, I, I kind of, I was excited to be honest with you when I saw our agenda today and it says clearly to the agenda, presentation relative to the Wilmington Elementary School Building Project. And I, and I think, you know, Truth of the matter is, is that I, and you know, I, I think that calling it Wildwood is is kind of a misnomer, you know, because everyone you drive by the what the, the Wildwood School, it's an abandoned school, you know. Let's face it, yeah, something should happen, knock it down, rebuild it, you know, something. But we're really, it's even though it is part of the project, I'm not saying it's not. It really seems like it's more of an afterthought than than anything else. So, just you know, I, on a personal note, I I just wish that you know you guys could call it the elementary school project or whatever you want to call it on that end, just uh, so that it, it gets a more town-wide feel to it. Uh, question that I had really would probably be appropriate to Dr. Brand is that I know we're looking at upwards of $700 or so a year, and that's what the, I, I get it that it's a sliding scale, so it might be on average 700 in year one, maybe 620 in year 10, et cetera, et cetera. But when we're talking consolidation, are we talking cost savings within the schools that we can augment some of this against so that instead of saying it's a $700 savings, is, it, is there other ways through, you know, we're talking consolidation, I'm, so, I'm assuming that we're talking you know, staffing, et cetera. Is there other considerations that would bring that cost down for the average taxpayer over the life of the loan? Because I know people are concerned about, you know, paying the increase on the school side. You know, we, you know, you know, more than likely the taxes are going to go up two and a half percent on that. You know, the, with the two and a half percent on the town side, and you know, whatever happens from there. So I'm just wondering if there's any way to consolidate cost-wise down. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Glenn Brand, Superintendent of Schools. Thank you for the op opportunity to be here. It is a, it's a great question. In fact, right now, as part of this process, we also have to take. Uh, a very refined look at staff. Now, the tricky thing about that is that we're just as much as even if we were not in this project to be able to accurately predict staff for our operations, say four years from now or three years from now is not a perfect science. Things can change, needs can change one way or the other. So it, it's imperfect, but that being said, we are obligated through this project to take a close look at our staffing. And if we would open the doors next year, next month, what would that look like? The reality is we take a, a finer point to this is we will absolutely anticipate to have some staff safety. We are bringing together multi-staff, whether it's pre-K three or pre-K to five. There's the possibility to be far more efficient with some of our staff. At the same time, um, you know, there's a new program in this building, the STEM education program um, that we're planning. We don't have a STEM education teacher right now. So there could be swings both ways, but in terms of staffing specifically, and I can't speak to the facilities operation costs, those fall obviously largely outside of, uh, you know, to the town's purview. But from a staffing standpoint, uh, you know, we're, we're taking a close look at that right now. There will be some areas where there's going to be efficiency. Uh, there may be some where we might have to make small adjustments. And again, all of that, we just don't know what the enrollment will be three, four years from now. If the enrollment drops, we will, of course, adjust accordingly. You know, on the flip side, if enrollment grows, we may have to adjust accordingly, too. And that's, the, that's the tricky part of that. Thank you. And I think the last comment is that as we're looking at these, I, I'm assuming, big word assume, I mean, quite frankly, I think that the Wildwood will probably get knocked down. 
just my opinion. And then, you know, whatever happens to the site happens to the site. As far as the Wogan Street, if we, if we went with the pre-K to five at the north, we're still looking at, okay, what do we do with, with an abandoned building called the Wogan Street School? You know, do we renovate it for some town purpose? Do we knock it down? Do we sell it? You know, again, my guess would be some sort of a renovation and what do we do from there? And I, I think that's kind of a key piece, key piece because you're probably looking you know, like you were looking at a renovation cost, I think of like 40 million or something like that. So it's got to somehow be part of the equation of sorts that if we're going to keep the Wogan Street but as, as something. And again, I'm not saying necessarily a school, but it may be a, a decent avenue to keep it as a school and bring in the, the you know, if, if we're going to do a West Side project, I, and I, I hate using that word, but, you know, if we were to renovate, say, you know, on the on the other side of town that you know maybe bring the students in another school like the Shawshine or something temporarily into the Wogan Street while we fixate on what we're going to do on that side of town so like I said I'm, I'm thinking that the that even though the Wogan Street's not factored into the north project I just think it's still part of the equation in the in the long run that the town's going to have to deal with in some fashion and and spend money on Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. West. Mr. Kyra. Mr. Chair, uh, thank you uh, for the presentation. Um, I have some ideas about the Movement Street School, Frank. But, uh, I think that would make a great spot for a substation. But um, I, I know that we're getting prepared to pick a preferred option. Um, and I'm happy to hear that there is going to be a delay in that. Uh, for the residents to get some more information and some more feedback to us uh, that serve on that committee. Um, so I, I'm going to throw something out, and, and I think I probably know the answer. Uh, it, and I'm doing it uh, on behalf of some residents. Uh, what is the possibility of another preferred option that hasn't been looked at yet? And, and I'll tell you what, what was mentioned to me, is putting a pre-K to three at the North Intermediate, leaving the current Wuben Street School as a four to five, and then building a separate building for a pre-K to three on that piece of property, on that 14 acres. Um, you have the infrastructure there uh it's still going to it, it's going to be a campus type of um feeling just like you have the west and the middle school you um there should be no school disruptions if you're building a separate pre-k to three at the um north intermediate uh it will have on its campus a pre-K to five, but in two separate buildings. The project would probably be a lot more uh, affordable, uh, putting it there on a flat piece of property where you're not going to need retaining walls, because it's my understanding that doing it at the Wuben Street uh, or at the uh, Wildwood retaining walls have increased that cost. Uh, you're then decommissioning, uh, as was hoped for, the Wuben Street and the Wildwood. Um, I, I think it's, I think it's a pretty good, good thought that was brought to my attention. Uh, I thought I'd throw it out, uh, and with the delay in the preferred option selection, could we add this to the mix, um, and? Uh, take a look at that. And as for reuse of, uh, uh, you know, the Wuben Street School, if this happens, I can really see a, a substation in that area. It's on the other side of the tracks. What we've always talked about, it's in a, a densely populated uh, 
residential area. It has access to 93 in two locations. Um, I envision the Wildwood uh, as, a, as a needed cemetery area, uh, which is most important to, to the community as well. And then we could go right into the MSBA again uh, to renovate the Shawshin uh, School uh, and bring that up to speed. So now we have a, a new pre-K to three at the North Intermediate along with the uh, four to five at the North School campus atmosphere. Same thing at the West in the middle school. And then we concentrate on the Shawshin School. And, you know, I bring this up because uh, the residents of this town have uh, already put in uh, many hundreds of thousands of dollars on new windows at the North Intermediate, a new roof. Uh, next year, it's budgeted for new windows at the West Intermediate. Uh, so it, it, it continues uh, with, the, with the help of the residents. They, they continue to show support uh, for the infrastructure of our buildings. So instead of letting those just go, uh, we keep that and we get a new building at the North and we get a uh, renovated building at the Shawshank. Just, just a thought. I didn't know if that could be uh, a preferred option to bring up to the committee. If I could interject, I want to give you the opportunity to respond. I do want to turn to Mr. Slag, who has been made mention of a uh, recommendation of a delay. Do you want to speak to that? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so as folks on the school building committee are aware, um, uh, but but the general public may not be. The original plan was to to have a vote of the school building committee tomorrow on a preferred option. Um, in meetings with uh, in, kind of internally among um, uh, 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 staff, both in on the town side and on the school Scott side, uh, uh, Dr. Brand and I uh, uh, came together and, and and after a meeting sent out a memorandum to the school building committee recommending a delay in that vote to October 1st. That did come after uh, conversations with our consultants. So we talked it over with SMMA and, and Dora Whittier, and, as well as conversations with the MSBA about the potential impact of requesting a delay. The goal of that delay would be to provide more uh, opportunity for community information um, uh, to the public um, uh, over the next six weeks uh, to, uh, uh, to, to kind of get more feedback so the committee uh, could have uh, more information before they made their final decision on preferred option. That decision is obviously a decision of the committee, so the committee will have to vote on whether or not they want to extend that tomorrow, but it is the recommendation of both the superintendent and myself that the committee does take that action and vote to, to continue their uh, their vote until October 1st. So thank you very much, Chair, for the yeah. opportunity. And thank you. And if I could just add one piece, correct me if I'm wrong, but tomorrow night, uh, before the board considers that, I think there'll be a little bit more detail outlined as what more communication, more feedback looks like. Is that correct? Correct. That's correct. So there'll be more details announced about that plan of our intentions to gather more input from the community tomorrow night. So thank you for that, Chair. Mr. Carr. Yeah. Mr. Slagle, is, is October 1st a, a hard and fast date because I'm not available, not that that really matters. Uh, that, that was the date that was scheduled for the vote after a conversation with the MSBA. Um, uh, obviously, the committee will we, we'll certainly bring that up tomorrow. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think there, there may be some maneuverability around that particular date but i'm not sure how much because we were we were talking about it conceptually with the msba last week thank you mr slagle did you want to respond to sure. let me to mr kyra thank you for those questions mr kyle let me try and unpack those the first one being another preferred option at this point and while nothing is completely impossible or out of the question um it would have to go through a process to be able to change our course from where we are right now. Another conversation with MSBA and another relook at our schedule. <clears throat> and in truthfulness and transparency, we have not looked at putting a new pre-K to three 
while keeping the existing north immediate site and what that does to site congestion um, we'd have to go and explore that <clears throat> we do know that looking at the pre-k to three and pre-k to five options on those sites it fit well when we did remove the existing school that was there so it would have to be looked at to see if it was it's feasible to operate a new pre-k to three and the existing school on that site simultaneously. Um, MSBA would obviously need to be a part of that discussion to see what would happen and move forward, and it would certainly change the schedule. Whether or not MSBA would say, you know, time out, you need to stop in our program and go back and relook at it all and start to get back into the program, I don't know the answer to that question unless you have that conversation. Um, it's certainly something that could be looked at. My biggest concerns would be just the density of population on that site with two separate buildings not being designed to both fit on that site simultaneously. One of them's already there. Um, but it's something that could be looked at. That was the, the will of the town. Thank you, Mr. Carver. Uh, Prior to the meeting, we had a coin flip between the Finance Committee and the School Committee, the Finance Committee won. We're gonna give them the opportunity to go first. Uh, sorry, Jesse. Uh, and then we'll go to the School Committee, School Building Committee, and then obviously if a resident would like to ask a question or make a comment, we wanna make sure that everybody's heard. I do kindly ask that if you wanna make a comment or ask a question, if you don't mind rising to the podium if, if, if you're able and identifying yourself uh, by name and address. Any member of the Finance Committee like to be heard? You don't have to. I want to give you the opportunity. Dr. Jackson. Good evening. Uh, my name is Brad Jackson. Um, I'm wearing two, I'm struggling wearing two hats here tonight. Um, I am a, a member of the Finance Committee and a resident here in Wilmington, but I'm also a retired um, central office um, administrator with about 30 years of experience and uh, have been through the MSBA process um, many times and um, thank the school building committee for um, their patience and looking at so many options. It really is amazing. Um, every time I see this presentation, I hear something new. So I appreciate, I wanted to clarify two points from the presentation if I could um, that I didn't know before, and I just want to make sure I heard them right. It's, it's still like drinking water out of a fire hose, these presentations. There's a lot of information. Because of the site issues at Wildwood and Woburn Street, those projects, as estimated, exceed the um, site costs, exceed the maximum amount that the MSBA would reimburse. So in essence, what I heard you say, or what I interpreted you as saying, is that the portion of MSBA support of the pre-K to five option would actually as a percentage be higher because we're, we, would, we would not hit that threshold of not having, not spending too much on site. Is that correct? It's very close. Uh, there's other, there's, there may be other considerations. It, it, they all, all of the options actually exceed what the site cap is for MSBA uh, across the board. The, the problem which is, <clears throat> which is, but that's typically, that's they, typically they, they have MSBA. caps in there because they're trying to right. make it equal across the state. Some sites are in urban areas and have no sites to work with and their costs are lower versus you go out into Western Mass and they have oodles and oodles and they're making fields everywhere. So they're trying to, you know, make that equal. Um, the, the point with the site cost and these specific sites is it's exacerbated at the Woburn and Wildwood sites with the different topography that's there. And just to give you an example, at the Woburn Street site, there's $3.8 million of extra work in re just retaining walls as compared to work at the North Star. So you can see how that contributes to that site cap specifically on that Woburn Street. And so that, yes, they, they're capping it so the local share for site cost for that particular option. So yes, you're right. The only difference is they're all over the caps because the cap's pretty low. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and we all know how $3.8 million um, is going to educate our kids better on, rather than spending it on retaining walls. But 
Um, the, other the other question I had is, I, I really like the analysis that you put in there about comparing the uh, Wildwood pre-K to K only with an estimated cost of renovating Woburn and renovating the North and the pre-K to three with the estimated cost of renovating the North. And I, I encourage the building committee to use that as a, because I, I think you have to compare apples and apples here. And with one, one project, which is much more expensive and painful, um, you are hitting three schools, essentially. And doing a pre-K to three <coughs> would still require us to address another school, which would delay, either delay that school or delay the Shawshin, you know, doing something on for the rest of our elementary students. The other question I had, which was prompted by a question from a member of the select board, um, I assume there's no cost included in any of these estimates of demo, for demolition of any buildings or retrofitting of any building. So in the pre-K to five building, we'll have two, two buildings we have to figure out what to do with, demolish if we choose to demolish them, which would be the select board's decision, I assume, because those schools would be turned back from the school committee to the select board. And the Woburn Street, if we went to the pre-K to five, if they choose to demolish that, that cost wouldn't be, isn't included in this as well. Correct. So that's, that's something to consider um, as we go forward. Um, I, my comment, I'm gonna take my FinCom hat off for a minute and I was the director of administration and finance here in Wilmington when we built the middle school. And uh, we spent a lot of money on site work to tear, to, to uh, demolish that rock hill upon which that school is now built. But um, we, the school building committee has an opportunity in my view to address a sizable portion of the issue that we face as a community. I agree with the question and, and, and think, um, I know Dr. Brand doesn't want to put himself into a corner, but there, my expectations as a finance committee member is that there would be efficiencies associated with a pre-K to five option. Right now we have three principals supporting 715 students we would have one principal supporting 715 students. Would we have maybe need more assistant principals? Yes. But we would, right now we have three nurses. We, we staff three offices. There are even administrative costs that can be consolidated with a bigger school. The school system that I led for 16 years in Holliston, I had a 750 student pre-K to three school and a 800 student, I'm sorry, I got them mixed up. 800 is pre-K to three, pre-K to two, and my three to five school was 750. This school is not too big, and it is manageable, and it is, uh, can make it a, a beautiful environment where fourth and fifth graders get a chance to mentor and support their behaviors actually better when they are around little ones, as opposed to when they're by themselves and they got nobody kind of to uh, keep them track. So I encourage the uh, school building committee to make what to me is a generational decision. Um, you are setting the course of the future of the next two to three elementary generations of people, of students who are uh, going to be here. My oldest went to school with uh, the chair and they were in a pre-K to five, a K to five school and did okay in my view. Um, and she um, did very well. Sorry she did. Very, she did very well. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> they both did. And I. Uh, but I. So I. I don't envy your decision, but I encourage you to have the courage to think generationally, um, because this is the opportunity of a lifetime in this community to make our schools more efficient, to make them more. Um, 
manageable in terms of overhead and to provide a community, a pre-K to five community that will move well into our middle school and into our high school. May I actually even hold on to some more kids than less will go to Shawshank? Thank you, Dr. Jackson. Any other members of the Finance Committee like to be heard? M Mr. Chair, could I, could I just clarify something? I, I, I don't know if I misunderstood you, Mr. Jackson. The, this is not district-wide pre-K to five. Right. This is on one section of the community and then you would do the same on the other side. Okay. Okay. Any members of the school committee like to be heard? Chairman Fenley, good evening. Mr. Chairman, good evening. Thank you. Uh, Jesse Fenley, 45 Andover Street. Uh, and it's my pleasure to serve as chair of the school committee this year. Uh, thank you for a brief moment to speak to you guys. Uh, appreciate all the time that's gone into this from everybody. So, uh, and me and Ronnie doing this again, thank you. Um, you know, the school committee met earlier this evening. We reviewed the same presentation. We were fortunate to uh, be able to go through the same, the same process. Um, ultimately, the committee has decided uh, at our meeting uh, earlier this evening to support whatever the recommendation of the school building committee uh, turns out to be. Uh, that said, the school committee uh, is in a consensus and an agreement that a new building pre-K to five option at the north location is the best current option that we have. Uh, we recognize that, you know, certainly our friends and neighbors in Wilmington uh, have any number of other thoughts and beliefs, and certainly those are valid. Uh, but this project, to steal a term from Dr. Jackson, is a generational opportunity to address a number of the issues we have in town. Uh, educationally, it's the best option for the students and the staff. Uh, financially, it makes operational sense. It removes a burden on parents who have multiple children in multiple grades that have to coordinate drop-offs, pickups, and after-school activities at different buildings at different points in town. Uh, it provides a footprint for what the project on the west side of town could look like. Uh, and so you know, we recognize there's a lot of work, there's a lot of information that folks are still looking for, and, and uh, that's, that's important, and we want folks to get what they need and, and feel like they deserve, uh, but we are supportive of the K-5 to project. So my colleagues may want to uh, speak on their own, but that's, uh, I think that's a nice summary of our meeting from earlier today. So thank you all. Thank you. Any other members of the committee like to be heard? Mr. Turner. My kids would be so proud of me. I wrote this on the PC at home, and I can see it on my phone here. <laughs> Technology is everything. Um, it's not. But. So, um, Stephen Turner, 59 Washington Avenue, member of the school committee. Um, I want to thank all of those who've been involved today, all the amazing amount of work that's gone on. It's been years already. Um, and it's, a, it's an incredible project, an incredible amount of involvement of the community, the school building committee, members of the district leadership team, our external partners. It's amazing to see the great work and collaboration. And at the heart of this topic, there are two key drivers. The first one is doing what is best to ensure the future generations of Wilmington students have the best education and the best environment for learning. The second is doing what's best, most responsible for the finance of the town specifically the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. It's clear that the three schools here are physically old, far from accessible and, and similar uh, building constraints, and difficult to maintain. We work hard to maintain them, but it's difficult. They are not able to support the current educational standards and um, the, the parents' demand of the district and the town for the students. <clears throat> Compounding this is their, their, disrupt, their separate locations, which leads to disruptive transitions for the students, additional time and cost for bu busing, and efficient staffing. It's amazing to think about some of our staff spend a part of their day in a car, not in front of, in front of students, because some of our resources need to be shared between the buildings. 
when we think about what we want the best for children, it's having the educators in the room with them. Having them in three separate buildings really defeats that purpose. Um, and it's also clear, we've seen from the, all the information and all the data, the few, fewer building projects are cheap. The less times you put shovels in the ground, it, it saves money. Stated simply, one project for this total scope, educational and building need, will always be cheaper than two or three. Even if we stretch it out over time, the longer we stretch it, the more expensive it gets with cost increases. And naturally, this math is doubled, as pointed out by our finance committee, when we think longer term and think about the two different uh, educational uh, districts. It would be fiscally irresponsible to suggest that we should do four or five, six building projects. It would be more money for the town to spend, it'd be more time for the town to spend, and it'd be more for the taxpayers. Building a pre consolidated pre-K to five does both what is right for the future generations of education, for our students, and what's best for the taxpayers. I spent a little bit of time at the, the pre-K, uh, excuse me, Fourth of July booth, and I was talking to a bunch of different people, got a bunch of different feedback, and it was, it was very consistent. But one of the things that really struck me was I met a woman who was, I'm gonna par paraphrase here, this is none of this is direct quote, but she mentioned that her children were well beyond school. She noted that she strongly supported the pre-K school reason for two reasons, the pre-K to five, excuse me, school option for two reasons. First, it was clearly the best option for the students and it is important to look out for future generations. Second, she noted that it was the best possible, that the best possible schools in town would do the most to improve her home value. And in the future, someday she may need to sell, her, her children may need to sell, and having good schools is a landmark of a good town and a landmark of homeowner value. And so she was very, very supportive of the pre-K to five option for some very clear reasons. And I think it is an opportunity we should really embrace. And I hope the school building committee takes those actions in the near future. And then I strongly believe that if we present a strong pre-K to five option to the town, it will be overwhelmingly supported. Similar to the high school, similar to the other projects we've done in town, residents support the children and they would support this sort of project. Thank you, sir. Any other members of the school committee like to be heard? All right. Once again, thank you all for being here. Don't forget to adjourn before you leave, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you're on the record for the next day or two. Um, any uh, members of the school building committee would like to rise and be heard? Thank you. Um, Michael Camosio, 19 Dorothy Ave. I'm speaking for myself, but as a member of the School Building Committee. Uh, one of the items I hope we can address tomorrow night, and I've heard here tonight, uh, the cost for repair options, plus how and when those could be done, is an area I think we definitely need a little more uh, vision on. Um, a little bit idea of what the capital plan might be will help us educate how that 25 to 40 million may play out in over how many years. I think I made a request uh, through SMMA for the cost estimate breakdowns, and hopefully the committee can talk more tomorrow. Um, a little bit to add to my perspective, so some frequent questions I've heard. Yes, I think throughout the whole process we've considered what the option we select as a committee has to do for the other side of town. We do understand that there'll be a difference for a period of time until we either get back into the SBA uh, process or at ourselves. I also want to know how any other sites can be reused, and I'm not in favor at all of the town selling any. Hopefully we can repurpose it for public safety or um, athletic fields we might, we might lose. Lastly, I want to mention the Menti session. I don't know if we can share it quickly. The session that we had on August 7th is still available online at menti.com. And there's a code 61241572. That's going to be open until tomorrow early when Ronnie has to close it to present to us tomorrow. But if there's anybody listening who wants to Go through those slides. It does take a few minutes to click through, but it'll give you a chance to answer the same questions. We got feedback on the set. Thank you. Thank you. And Mike, that link is also, we have that online, right? I know there's probably about 20,000 people watching here tonight, but I'm hoping that they'll all fill it out. I, if I could just, before I, there was one comment, and thank you for your comments. Uh, I just want to be clear, and, and Mr. Manager, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm unaware of any plans for any of the sites post any decision. So I just want to go on record. I know that that's been mentioned by a few, not, not just the previous speaker, but that's been mentioned by a lot. And certainly a fair question that I think a lot of us probably get. But there are no plans 
ahead of you know uh, the decision or how many sites after the, the vote has been taken. That's correct. Uh, as um, I've mentioned to the board in the past, the process would be the school committee, assuming a consolidation in a vacant building, the school committee would be required to turn that building back over to the town. And then um, uh, the board of selectmen would uh, appoint a committee um, to, to evaluate the, the, or assign a committee to evaluate the reuse of one or more of these buildings. That committee would bring back recommendations to the select board. Um, and then the select board could choose to act on that. It would be within the purview of the town manager to declare a building surplus, which would be a, a prerequisite to any request that it be sold. I, I can't imagine making that sort of uh, uh, determination um, on any of these buildings. Um, but then even if that process was followed, it would all need to go to town meeting before there was any divest divestiture of any of these buildings, either through sale or lease. So um, just very clear, there's a very public process we need to, get, need to go through before any reuse outside of a municipal use would, would have to be determined. Thank you for that. Because I would imagine, if you're like me, some of the feedback you've gotten is fear of what might happen to a particular location mm -hmm. if it was taken offline or it was reused for something else. So I just want to think that's an important point to make. Good evening. Good evening. Christine Prendergast, School Building Committee member and also a parent. And uh, I, am, I work in IT for a living. I'm a very data-driven person. And so when I look at this project and um, analyze the feedback that we are hearing, my question to the community is, what would it take to demonstrate that the pre-K-5 option is in fact the best option for us? You saw from the data, from the analysis that we've completed, that it ranked the highest. You've heard the benefit to the teachers. We've heard even more benefit from the teachers who are collaborating on this project, that it allows them to collaborate together under one roof. It allows for the students to have more intimate relationships with their teachers as they progress through the building. We've heard about the benefit to the families being in one location. We know that the school busing already goes to that location. We are not adding traffic we already have busing there. There's a great benefit there. We know that the benefit to the students is tremendous. We've talked about this for years, about the number of transitions that our students make. We are saying we will do away with that or we will reduce it significantly. We know, and I agree with Mr. Jackson, that we will achieve some financial economies of scale by consolidating into one building. We'll finally be able to accommodate students with disabilities and special needs that we cannot achieve today. Another point to make is what happens if we only do one of the options, if we only built the Wildwood again? What happens if we had to shut down Woburn Street or North just like we did with the Wildwood? We're crying about the expense of the new option the price tag on that, what would happen if? It would be in our best interest to consider the pre-K-5 new option. But I would also implore our community to give us feedback. Think about the things that I just said. Give us the feedback through our email, the Wildwood Project questions at WPSK12.com. Okay, that all those questions are shared with the team we want to hear if we are overlooking something, please share the feedback because the data tells us that this is the right thing to do. Thank you. Any other members of the school building committee like to be heard? Okay. Seeing none, if there's no objection, I'd like to open it up to uh, members of the community who would like to ask questions or make a comment as it relates to this presentation. Good evening, Kevin McDonald. I'd like to share some thoughts and some concerns um, about this project and about what I think is a failure to look at uh, addressing some serious concerns. Uh, first of all, when the high school got built, I think it was about $85 million and MSBA uh, reimbursed about half of that. 
people's taxes doubled. Um, and I'd encourage you all to check me out on this, um, that there have been hundreds of people that have moved out of town. Uh, you can go to the Lowell Deeds and uh, research that since uh, about 2015. Um, originally, there was a special town meeting for a pre-K school, and now it's turned into this big behemoth of a uh, consolidation. Um, so I have questions as to whether or not um, all of this procedure is um, lawful um, and if it's um, in line with um, the limitations from the special town meeting. Um, one of my concerns is that um, the Wildwood School has asbestos. Whether the school gets knocked down or whether it get, gets renovated, that asbestos has to be removed. Um, I don't know why the town um, selectmen haven't uh, addressed this issue and haven't um, either tried to sell some town land to use that money to, to do it or the, or the free cash that we have, which is about $40 million. The, the interest would probably pay for that. Um, we're in a building right now that's referred to as the Glen Road School. I actually went to third, fourth, and fifth grade here. And I'd encourage each and every one of you here tonight to actually go into the bathrooms and take a look at the fixtures. Uh, everything's pretty much sized for little kids. Um, with the bullying that's going on in our country, with um, the early ages that um, children are reaching adolescence, I really do not believe that um, pre-kindergarten age kids should be in school with um, uh, kids th that much older than themselves. Uh, we were originally told that there were 170 students that were in pre-K, then after reviewing some of the um, paperwork and reading through some of the, um, the data, it, it appears that there's 130 kids that are in uh, pre-K. Um, I was at a school committee meeting and I asked the superintendent how things are working out with the existing um, pre-K and he said, um, things are going good. So if things are going good, why are we burdening such uh, uh, high taxes to be put on people uh, when, when hundreds of people have moved out of town? Um, um, with regard to the North Intermediate site, um, I can't confirm this, but I, I will tell you that I have heard that there's a significant amount of contamination buried below the ground there. Um, nobody's uh, spoke about that tonight. Um, one of the other concerns that I have is that our superintendent got up there and said, there's no STEM education teacher. Uh, another gentleman got up and said that, um, you know, uh, a new school would be uh, helpful and it would meet our education needs. Um, a, a new building's not going to do that when you can't even have a STEM teacher. I go on Wilmington Apple very often and I look at the massive amount of turnover in the schools and the, and the uh, job openings in the school system and I, I have to ask myself, what the hell's going on? Why, why are we always looking for teachers out there? Is, is, what's the problem? I think we need to do an analysis of what's going on, maybe do a survey with the teachers, maybe do a survey with the parents and see what's going on. You know, it's, it's very um, concerning to see that much turnover in our schools. Um, I haven't heard any mention of uh, turning this building back into a school. Uh, there's no reason why um, it can't be turned back into a school when it was already a school. If, if it takes um, addressing some uh, building codes, um, there's no possible way that, I think the lowest amount that I saw was a $29 million amount um, for the lowest um, uh, amount. I don't know if you want to bring that back up on the screen, but there's no possible way that um, anybody in the world would think that turning this school back into a pre-kindergarten school would cost anywhere near that amount. Um, uh, 
I do have a question though. Um, I would like to know, Mr. Bendel, maybe, maybe you might be the one that answers this question. We have our school finance director here. Um, can you tell us, since you get the warrants uh, every, week, every week that you meet, uh, how much has been spent on this um, project or preliminary studies uh, for, this, um, for this venture that people are seeking to um, uh, you know, come to a conclusion on what to do? You know how much has been spent so far? I, I, I don't even need it. I didn't need to write down to the dollar. I mean, if, if it was within a hundred thousand dollars, that would be fine. But if you can just give us a, a rough idea, Lee, I believe your town appropriation that was made to fund this feasibility was one point two million dollars, <clears throat> and certainly that hasn't been spent. We're about halfway through this process right now, right. and that that does include his reimbursement from the state for portions of the. So do I think we there's still five hundred and five hundred and fifty million dollars something along? So lines already from about, yeah. Just so, just so I, I I'm clear on this on the, and the rest of the town's clear. There's been about five hundred and fifty thousand dollars spent on these preliminary studies and that sort of thing. No, I said that the, the through the, the the current the current phase through the feasibility study, the total amount is one point two million. We're about halfway through that. Okay. Mr. McDonald, I don't want to interrupt you, and I always appreciate your commentary, but I do see a few people itching to get up, so I just want to be mindful and be respectful of others who are waiting. Yeah. Um, so if, um, if it does, um, once you do decide on what you want to um, build, it has to go before the town, but it, it's going to need an override. And so maybe Mr. Slagle you could speak to the town on what an override is and what is involved and what the impact is on the people. So uh, that's actually a very good question. So it would not be required to be an override. This would be a debt exclusion. Um, so it, uh, it's actually, thank you very much, Randy, for having that, that slide up. So the, the projected um, debt exclusions for each one of these projects um, uh, if you look at under the estimated local share of the, the slide that's currently on the board, um, uh, the, the annual debt payment on what's called a declining uh, scale. So the, the highest payment for debt is in the first year and the lowest payment, which is a little less than half is in the year 30, uh, is uh, under the annual debt payment line. And then um, uh, if you broke that down over the average cost or, uh, or sorry, the cost for an average home, which is approximately a $683,000 home, um, that's the, the annual tax increase for that actual home for those debt payments. Again, that would be reduced over the 30-year life of the loan. Okay, so whether you call it um, an override or a debt exclusion, um, it it's still gets voted on because it doesn't um, meet the proposition two and a half guidelines correct so uh, just to let folks know home the, the the process would be this would uh the the project would go before a special town meeting um uh in order to uh for the town meeting to approve uh the the debt exclusion vote and then would have to go on to a ballot uh, a local ballot to get voted great okay. thank you so mr in, mcdonald so thank words, you very much for your yeah, comments. You. I just, just want to make sure just, I get I'll to the next conclude, person. I'll just conclude. Please. That um, um, when it comes to uh, putting work out for bid, um, when it's a very, very large amount, um, that uh, keeps a lot of the smaller contractors from bidding on work that would re require bonding. And so with regard to the um, asbestos at the... Um, Wildwood School, if, um, if there could be a town meeting article, a special town meeting article that just focused on uh, getting rid of the asbestos rather than knocking it down, getting rid of the asbestos in the whole site work, I think we would um, uh, find bids come in lower and more, more companies who don't have to have the massive bonding capability to be able to bid on that. Um, so. Right. 
Thank I'm you very much. Looking Mr. forward McDonald. to getting some STEM teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McDonald. Would anyone else like to be heard? Sir, Mr. Neville. Scott Neville, 215 Chestnut Street. Uh, just very quickly, because I want to make sure that this is clear. Um, so, uh, Mr. Slagley, you just talked about a debt exclusion versus an override. So my understanding is that a debt exclusion is a temporary tax increase, and when that debt is paid off, the, tax, the, the increase to taxes is then gone, whereas an override is a permanent tax increase on the current tax rate. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Neville. Would anyone else like to make a comment, ask a question? Sir. Baldwin. I'm a resident of One Leonard Lane, and I have two boys, both beyond this school. But I'm very impressed by all the work that's been done by this group. Uh, so I'm the facilities operations person, and the deck that was put together and the analysis that you've done and looking at all these options, to me, is a no-brainer. Uh, just having one building versus many buildings, a lot easier to maintain. It ends up being cheaper in the long run. And having extra space left over from other alternate sites for reuse for some other purpose for the town is another bonus. Um, so I appreciate all the hard work that everyone has done for this. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that I, I'm thankful. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Hi, Joe Jackson, 10 Apple Tree Lane. I'm also on the Historical Commission, but here is a father of four um, in Wilmington. And I just wanted to offer a few things that I think this is a beautiful plan. I think this is the way it was meant to be. And we're kind of lucky that we got started on the MSBA approach as these other things like the asbestos at Wildwood School became apparent to us that we had other bigger problems. But I wanted to offer at least a historical perspective on why this is kind of important. Because in 1858, we didn't have any schools, um, any high school that is. And there was a big argument of, should we fund it or should we not fund it? And um, in the end, it sat for about 14 years until the townspeople elected to have an in-town high school. And I think I mentioned that before, but um, you know, in, in the 1930s, we had 1,000 students. And in 1958, they established a permanent building committee uh, because we had boosted to 3,000 residents uh, that were students. And they began building schools very quickly. So we've seen like these lists before where every year there was a new school and in one of the town reports you read that the, the bid was for an $800,000 school. Um, these circular schools, they were first going to be uh, rectangular prisms, more traditional like, but they said this is too much. Let's do it for half the cost at 400000 And in the end, what happened in the 60s is the attempt was to build cheap schools that would meet this demand of uh, 5,500 students, that was our max in 1974. Now we're at uh, 2760, about half that for, for public demand. But we have old schools that were built cheaply. And so we're, we're at a time when we have a lot of people interested in moving to Wilmington. We have a lot of people who are building, you know, modern houses and, and we're looking forward to modern schools. And if we don't do it now, and we end up having to do it in five years or 10 years to fix these other schools, we're going to say, you know, why didn't we do this sooner when we had an opportunity to package uh, a K through five option that most communities see as the most favorable, again, for grade progressions, for teachers, and for measures of scale. So I, I see a historical response that, you know, even the West, it was originally the junior high. It wasn't meant to be a two year school, um, but that, that's what happened out of necessity. So we're, we're fixing things that were emergencies from the 60s in our in our modern times so just wanted to offer that perspective as well thank you thank you, thank you sir would anyone else like to be heard mr allen thank you mr chairman um judge allen stone hitch drive Wilmington. um full disclosure my wife most of you probably know but for the public. My wife is a member of the Permanent Building Committee, and as such, she's a member of the building, the Wildwood School Building Committee. Um, but to make one thing perfectly clear, these are my thoughts, 
my opinions. They do not necessarily reflect those of my wife. Quite frankly, the only one that used to listen to me in my opinion was my mother, God bless her soul. <laughs> uh, nobody, nobody listens to me now. Um, I am not an educator, but I am educated. Um, I went to, uh, uh, my kids went to Wilmington schools. They both got good education. <clears throat> they graduated from excellent universities, Syracuse University and Northeastern University. Uh, the only educator in the family is my daughter-in-law, who's the teacher in high school down in Texas. So that being said, um, I'm here to talk a little bit about our seniors. And I think you'll find out more when we have the meeting over the senior center. I think you'll hear more from the seniors. And I can tell you, because I am, I am one of them, <laughs> uh, many years, and uh, they have all supported Wilmington schools, the high school, the middle school. I advocated for those schools. My wife advocated for those schools. We are not anti-school. What we are is pro-value schools. So what I'd like to do, and by the way, I don't have it on my phone here because first of all, I wouldn't be able to read it too small, so I wrote it on a piece of paper. Um, I think what we need to talk about is that the favored option appears to be based on comments here, seems to be the pre-K through five up at the north side. I think it'd be interesting if we want to get value, I think we need to drill down a little bit in what's included. Now, at some of the meetings, people have heard about the gym. So this current proposal as it stands now is a 12,000 square foot gym. With thousands of people at home watching this, Mr. Chairman. Um, the 12,000 square foot gym is the size of the high school gym. The MSBA is only going to participate in half of that. The remaining, if we go for it, the remaining 6,000 square foot is all Wilmington money. And in one of the meetings, that number, somebody calculated, came out to be $8.3 million. To me, that's not a good value for what we're getting for an elementary school. To put it in perspective for maybe people watching on television, many people in Wilmington live on 10,000 square foot lots. This gym is going to be bigger than some of our residents' lots, not their house. It's going to be bigger than some of the lots in town. That's a big gym for K, pre-K through five. Now, so that's the, the gym. Drilling down a little further, at the June 25th Wildwood School Building Committee meeting, I watched it. I've watched most of them, at least when, when I started getting it interesting. Um, and... Dr. Brand mentioned that in here, this is above special education, there's going to be facilities for physical education and physical, I'm sorry, physical therapy and occupational therapy. Now, I heard that, and then later on, I said, I, I, I can't believe what I heard. I went back and I watched the video, and you can all do the same thing. You can watch it on YouTube. They're about... 48 minutes in. Physical therapy and occupational therapy. Quite frankly, I don't know what that is for elementary school. But there's going to be a cost to it. Okay? So, like anything else, it's like buying a house. You like to buy a $1 billion house in Wilmington. Maybe you can only afford a $600,000 house. Okay? So we have to, if we're going to determine value, Again, speaking for the seniors, we have to make sure and convince them that they're getting value. And we have to dig down into some of these numbers and prove that it's a good financial value. And right now, what I see, I don't think it's a good value. Now, I am not an advocate for that option anyway. But 
if that is the way it's going, I think those numbers have to be refined. We have to come up, we want, we want to cut these numbers down, what people are going to pay, the seniors, $700. That's in addition to any normal budget increases. $700 for the, quote, average home. Most people sitting, sitting in this room, it's going to be more than $700. <clears throat> and it's easy to figure out and when you look at your assessment, compare it to the 680000 and then multiply it by the 730, you'll find out. The, uh, the, uh, the other point, um, Select Kyra, I, I think, had a good idea in terms of looking at other options. Quite frankly, uh, I think it's a good option, Mr. Kyra. Um, I don't know whether timing it would work, but I think it's perhaps uh, something that, um, that should be considered. So um, I thank you for the time, Mr. Chairman. I hope the um, committee will look into some of these issues and make sure that the seniors are getting a value. If they vote for it, they want to make sure that they're getting a value. And so right now we're looking at the numbers from 30,000 feet. We have to, what are the numbers on the ground? What are some of these extra costs that are in there? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Would anyone else like to be heard? Sure, I do see uh, some folks who have risen who haven't been heard yet. If I don't mind, Mr. Turner, I'd like to turn to them first. Thank you. Sir. Derek Feeney, 5 Arlene Avenue. Um, I have the great position of being an abutter to one of these properties. So that brings me here, and my concern is the abutter uh, position, um, seeing how some of the past projects have gone down recently. So that is my big red flag. Just wanted to learn when, if something was to pass, when do we find out what property lines are taken over, what trees are taken down, fences taken away. Um, I think I'm one of the only abutters here on the North Intermediate Project site because I believe my neighbors don't really know what's going on here. I know a lot's been sent out, but people don't have kids, different situations, not on the Apple website um, or some of these other I saw all the places that we sent stuff out to. It was great, but not everybody's getting this message. Um, so, yeah, and my concern is the water level in that property. A lot of uh, flooding. Um, and I saw there's some runoff. I'm concerned about the neighbors. Um, with that situation, what else? Yeah. Um, and then I saw the Menti. The Menti was great. The 93 people, but... Two votes for non-consolidation versus one for consolidation doesn't seem like a very accurate uh, poll. I think we should vote, do you want to consolidate, do you not want to consolidate, and then go from there. Um, because I'm looking at the voting, that non-consolidation, if you add those up, we're, we're neck and neck. Um, future sites, I'm concerned with losing fields. This town doesn't have a lot of fields. It's not a walkable town. Uh, I mean, some areas are, of course, but uh, concerned with that and also concerned learning about how the Woburn site um, was actually donated from a family for educational purposes. And would we be honoring that? Are we, you know, that's something we got to look at and think about. Um, jobs lost, something to think about. Um, and, you know, we voted for a senior center, we voted for a town hall, and now we're in this situation. Um, and uh, that's it. How are we going to vote on the other side to get anything done with all these projects going down? So just wanted to make those points. George, sir, I would like to turn to Mr. Doerr, if you could answer or address the question about the timeline. Do you have any indications? Sure, the, the, the timeline is important. Those are great questions. Uh, as uh, in a butter to one of the options, once a preferred option is selected and we go out and we're able to do some of the testing, some of the first things that we would be doing once that preferred site is is doing an analysis of soils to determine where groundwater levels are, whether there's a geotechnical investigation, what's the subsurface conditions like, are there boulders, are there ledge, are there rocks, are there contaminated soils? What are we doing about stormwater management, right? What's coming in from neighboring properties coming to that soak that is down low? 
where does that stuff go? So all of those things, right, that's the kickoff of the next phase. And typically what we do is once we have a preferred site and we know where we're working, we convene a meeting of the abutters to say, we're getting started on this. This is where we are today. Here's the information that we're looking to get and acquire. You know, what are the concerns that are out there? Usually they have to do with sight lines. They have to do with noise and construction and dust during three. Or where does storm water go if it's coming from the site? On all of those things, we want to get out in the open and have those discussions. So as we progress through the project, the abutters are directly progressing with us. So I think that would be an important piece. And we can hear some of the concerns and try and work from the design side to mitigate those as much as we can. So that would be the timeline for that is when it first happened. Um, and you know, property lines of abutters, you know, one of our first efforts, again, would be doing a full boundary survey. So all of that information would become public. Again, we'd be sitting down with the butters and say, this is where we've determined our lines are. If there are any discrepancies, we will do that. Um, so from our perspective, you know, one of the most important things is, is to be a good neighbor as much as we can when there's an imposing construction project coming. So we want that group to be you know, really close to us as we develop the project. And we want you to kind of be first to hear some of the things and us to be first to hear some of your concerns. Um, and that's how that timeline. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to be heard? For the sure, Mr. Mellorani. Uh, Paul Mellorani, 176 Middlesex Ave. I just want to clarify one point, okay? The town is not taking anybody's land. To my knowledge, there's no imminent domain action. There's no land taking being done here. The town will build on town land, as they always have. That's a very important point. Thank you, sir. Hi, Don Lysko, 16 School Street. As an abutter to your current project, um, yeah, your communication is lacking, and uh, how the abutters were treated wasn't so good either. I applaud you if you meet with the abutters before the actual project takes place and address their concerns. That would be awesome. Um, also, the debt exclusion goes away after how many years? So in the uh, in the example that's set up on the on the screen, that is based on a thirty year debt profile. Thirty years, I'll be ninety two. Awesome. <laughs> so then we're talking about another seven thirty for the west side, right? Mega school, if that goes through, another thirty years, if that's the time. That's we do one side, we have to keep it good on the other side. Well, just if I could just uh, clarify, there are no plans, There's no definitives, right? I think that's part of this chess game that we're playing right now is that we've got to make a decision and certainly we're keeping in mind what that end result would mean for future decisions but you know I think I'm pretty comfortable in saying that we don't have any plans for anything as of yet I mean it's pretty clear the town's going to do things in the future long after I'm gone too but you know I, we can't we don't have any definitives okay at the uh, last school meeting uh, building Wilmington building committee meeting it was said that what was done on one side by Mr. Brand would be followed on the other side of town. So if everybody's saying that the mega school is the option that we should follow, should it go through, then we're looking at the mega school on the other side of town. Perhaps. I sure. Okay. Um, what else? Um, oh, so they're talking about the, uh, whatever happened to the, what's the status on the repurposing committee? We're looking at all these buildings and they're empty and stuff. That was on so, the agenda, I thought. Correct. We'll be taking that up next. Oh, okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. I did like your uh, comment about the uh, additional uh, school there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to be heard? Ma'am. Michelle Feeney, 5 Arlene Ave. Good evening. Um, I just want to mention the surveys and the materials that have been shown. I am very disappointed to hear that it sounds like the Mentimeter, which a lot of the town, the 23,000 residents, that's a hard thing for people to go on in addition to the Zoom. And I just hope that there is a little more outreach because it, you can't, there are so many residents that can't even make it here tonight. So for those of you watching at home, I, I want to speak to that. There's a level of frustration that there are gonna be residents that aren't even aware that this is happening. They don't know how to use a Mentimeter. 
I, I use Zoom, it was tough for me to even to try to use the Mentimeter survey. Um, I think there needs to be a better cross-section. I'm very happy to hear that the vote has been delayed. I'm also equally happy to hear that Mr. West has discussed the naming of the project, but the fact is this project has gone on for three years and we're changing the name a month before the vote or two months before the vote. Uh, I think there's still gonna be a very large subset of residents that still have no idea that this is going on and I think that needs to be considered. I'm glad that um, my <clears throat> former, uh, uh, a former, another resident has spoken about the 30 years. I noticed someone came up to make a point of the debt. Ex inclusion or exclusion, is that? Exclusion. What? Exclusion. Exclusion. 30 years of, a th I'm gonna say $1,000 because I've looked up the most recent real estate transactions and for most of the homes, that is what the average bill would be when you take into consideration inflation and so forth. For the last several years, residents in this town and all over the country have struggled with inflation. And I think this is the time to look at more options and be more frugal and do things gradually. I, I am concerned that the people making these decisions are from, are may, maybe not have struggled as much with that and I want them to realize that this will drive residents out of town. I grew up in this town I know a lot of people from every walk of life in this town, and this will greatly affect them staying in this town. I've heard people say, well, you know, this we need this. We, well, it'll bring great new people to the town. Well, I hope that people will consider the reason people want to move to this town are the people that built this town. So I hope that's considered as well. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I just, just want to clarify a couple points, really important ones. Uh, tomorrow night, is, is, there's been a recommendation made by Dr. Brand and Mr. Slagle for a postponement. That doesn't mean that there will be one, but there will, it will be voted on tomorrow by the school building committee only, uh, whether or not to postpone. So I just want to make sure that's very clear. That's 6.30 tomorrow night at the high school. Uh, and so we would encourage everybody to attend. Um, and, and Ms. Feeney, I do, I, I agree, it is difficult uh, I agree that there are some people that don't even know we're here tonight. I absolutely agree with you. And I think that's something that every volunteer who serves in any official capacity struggles with, is how do we get more input? How do we get more participation? And so certainly if you have ideas about that, we welcome that. Uh, I certainly do, and I don't want to speak for everyone else, but I would imagine they do too. Um, and that's part of the reason that we've kind of convened everybody, and I really, you know, I'll take uh, the blame here. Uh, I've, I've asked everybody to come here in the middle of the summer, I know the night is getting long. Um, most of you have seen this presentation a few times uh, as elected officials are appointed, but I really applaud you coming out and making the effort to be here um, and try to you know, hear this feedback, which we, we all believe is really critical, whether you're for a project, against a project, um, not sure yet, uh, like some of us, but that's valuable input. So really appreciate those who did take the time to be here. And for those who weren't able to be here, I think tomorrow night we'll have more information about other possibilities for you to contribute. And so I look forward to, I know our staff, staffs have put together some really good ideas about how we can get more input. And I think that's the reason for um, the recommendation of a delay tomorrow night, which will be considered. Anybody else? Ma'am. Hi there, I'm Darcy Martin, 26 Hopkins Street. Good evening. Um, in 2021, Wilmington was just one of 15 districts out of 71 that were chosen to participate in the MSBA program. While we all know the Wildwood School was selected as being the particular building in most need, we knew as Wilmington residents that school consolidation had been part of the town's master plan since 2017. I was excited to hear more about this consolidation personally. When my family moved here in 2019, I was surprised to hear that my kids three years apart would never attend the same school until high school. The proposal in front of us gives our town a unique opportunity to sh help reshape the future of Wilmington. Will it look different? Yes. Will it cost money? Yes. Will it also help create modern educational facilities to serve the evolving needs of all of our students? Yes. And will it create a superior teaching environment where it will be the go-to destination for hiring and retaining the best teachers and staff. Yes. I encourage the committee's consideration for a new north side pre-K through five school 
Maximizing the funds available to use today will help save costs over time. All three school buildings on the north side of town will require regular maintenance, educational improvement to spaces, overhauls, etc. over the next decades. Looking beyond just maintaining of the three buildings, I'd also like the committee to consider the benefits of a pre-K through five grade configuration. This configuration aligns district level resources to one school building, creating more robust programming, for example, special education, art, sciences, etc. Collaboration amongst teachers and staff with one leadership creates a cohesive school culture and educational vision. Parents and students alike will experience less school transitions, enabling a sense of community and a desire to be more engaged. The benefits of a new north side pre-K through five far outweighs the other options on the table in my opinion. My kids will never see the benefits of this project. They're in sixth grade and ninth grade and we're on the west side of town. However, I wanna do what's best for Wilmington and I don't know if this MSBA opportunity is gonna come around again if we, if we lose this. Lastly, I just wanna say I do really appreciate the work of the Wilmington Elementary School Building Committee. I personally have found the updates extremely helpful um, and transparent and I felt empowered to provide feedback when necessary. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Would anyone else who hasn't been heard yet like to be heard? <laughs> Good evening. Hi, I'm Barb Bodwin and I live at um, One Leonard Lane. Um, so I am just thinking about being in this building and we were here a few years ago and we were talking about a new town administration building. And I think that conversation was so, um, important, right, in terms of like how we steward our facilities and how this building really didn't meet the needs of what 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 a modern town administration needs. Um, you know, the, we had a whole conversation about the wires and the wireless and all of the sort of challenges um, that this building had brought, right, to the staff that, that, um, that worked here. Our children right now are in six elementary, elementary schools that are of the same age. They are struggling with the same type of deteriorating facilities. We have had amazing town maintenance that has tried to sort of band-aid things, but the, the reality is the infrastructure of these buildings is, is really at risk. And I'm very worried that we're sort of thinking about kicking the can down the road or being like penny wise and pound foolish in terms of thinking about the next step and this opportunity that we have um, before us. Um, I'm surprised to hear a new option come up today because I think that there's members on the select board that are on the, the, the Wilmington Building Committee. So you've seen the process and you understand that there was, a, there was many options on the table. You had the ability to inform those options. You had the vote that winnowed the, those options down. And now we're at the stage where we have three options and it's time to sort of move forward. Um, There has been so much work done. We started this in 2020. I don't know how Mr. Brand did it, Dr. Brand did it, but he filed an MSB application during COVID, during the heart of COVID because this was so important. We have now waited four years and we're at the step where we're, we have the ability to move this forward and what we're talking about is the delay. Last fall, um, we had the conversation about whether or not we should delay and think about a town-wide K-5 this whole idea of solving three of six, we had the opportunity to solve six of six. But the decision was made then that this was too important to move forward and delay should not happen, including votes from this board that said we should move this forward. So I just want to, to sort of voice that, that our kids are still waiting. My kids, again, won't see this, right? I'm on the west side. But it's really important that we don't have our kids and our teachers and our staff and our administration in buildings that can't function. Um, so there's so much upside. Dollars are really important, but what I'm hearing here is that this is actually a very fiscally responsible act to move forward. What I'm worried is we're sort of not thinking about the costs that come if we don't. There's been a lot of sort of conversation about what people are hearing in town, but all I see is the data from the survey. And we have been at this, and there, there is on the um, Wilmington Building Committee, there's a whole group that's been working on outreach. 
I went to the 4th of July, like sat at the table. We've done a lot of work. And I think I just want to be careful about folks that stand up here and try and represent more than themselves in offering their opinions. So we have had at our church, we have had a conversation and we've, we've seen a lot of support for this project and for the schools. So I just want to make sure that we are um, cognizant of the fact that we shouldn't equate seniors with not supportive nor parents with supportive. I think we all need to make sure that we're representing ourselves and that we use the data that's available. If there's another means that we want to collect more data, that's fine. But I would be very disappointed if we decide to go on hearsay or, or stories from Market Basket versus actually what's been collected in the work, that, work that's been done by this committee. So I want to thank everybody. It's been an incredible ride. I mean, we've been in lots of meetings, and I know lots of time has been spent in putting these materials together from, from those on the board. Um, and I just I think we need to act, and I think we need to move forward. I would not be in support of a delay. If that happens, I'll be it. But let's get moving, and let's get these kids into facilities that are appropriate. Thanks so much. Thank you for your comments. Would anyone else who has not yet been heard like to speak? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Turner, you are up next. So, just to, to touch on a couple points that have been raised by a few of the folks um, in their previous comments, on two distinct points, one related to the gym and one related to, to, to rooms such as occupational therapy and physical therapy. Part of what's so important about this project, and when I talked about educational needs earlier, our students have a very diverse set of needs. When they come into the schools, they're assessed for what their needs are. And children that have special needs have to have those needs met. It's federal law, it's law under DESE, or Commonwealth law governed by DESE, that whatever their educational needs are, they have to be met. If we can meet them in the district, great. If not, some of the children actually attend schools outside of the district, which is costly. As many as possible, the district has worked very hard over the years to keep as many children in the district as possible. Number one, because it's best for the kids to keep them close. But part of that is providing the full range of what they need educationally. We have children that as part of their educational plan is occupational and physical therapy. That's part of their education. It's part of their school day. You can actually walk into the middle school right now. Part of the middle school library is used for occupational and physical therapy for the Wildwood children that are there. So when we talk about Wildwood in middle school, it doesn't, it's, they're making it work, but it doesn't work. So the range of things this new building can accomplish, we have many children that need a reading specialist. It's not hyperbole to say that some of our reading specialist work happens in the hallway of some of our schools now because we do not have space for them. It's not hyperbole to say that sometimes it happens in repurposed closets. Same thing for math specialists. The number of students that receive something other than classroom instruction is very, very high. Some of them have very high needs. Some of them have a, a, a smaller disability that can be handled in a smaller space in a smaller way. But these buildings can accommodate those educational needs in ways that our three, six existing educational buildings cannot. And so it is very important. It is literally part of education to have occupational and physical therapy in the building with the children. If we don't do it, we have to pay extra for someone else to do it. The other thing about the gym. The logic of the gym is potentially, in the pre-K to five scenario, we're removing one building potentially from the school system at least. Right now, part of the town is use of those buildings on weekends and nights. Volleyball, basketball, for example. So if we were to go from the three schools, particularly the two, the, third, the, the one through three and the four and five, to just one building, we potentially no longer have the gym at, say, Woburn Street, available for that purpose. So part of the logic of having the 12,000 foot gym is a town need, not explicitly a school need. And it's up to the building committee to decide whether or not that building should host that. Because from the school's perspective, that if that were the option picked, that would be the only school's building left in the town came to the school and said, we need space for these recreational programs. We say that's our one space. And it's either 6,000 feet or 12,000 feet. 6,000 feet, we've lost half of our town's capacity for those non-educational activities. Separately, it can be used during the day because then you could have two gym classes at the same time. There is benefit to the school. 
But fundamentally, that is a town decision that would be made by the building committee in that meeting. They could choose to change that piece. That is the fact they could choose to change. No one would change the final number. And it, you make a good point, Bill Ray. But on the other side, the piece about occupational and physical therapy, those are absolute educational needs. And so it's very important that everyone understand that part of any new school, anywhere in the Commonwealth, it will include special spaces for different services that are not what I grew up with, you know, 25 kids facing a wall. That's not what every child sits through every day. And it may only be one day a week, three days a week, they go out for half an hour. But they need a space to do that other thing. And that's part of what these buildings can offer. Thank you. Thank you. All right, here's the deal. Everybody who's had an opportunity to speak has been heard. We're going to the lightning round. So if you have a quick question <laughs> or you have a quick follow-up, we want to hear it. And then we're going to move on to the next uh, portion of the meeting. Um, Mr. McDonald. I just want to clarify, one of the gentlemen got up and said that the... Um, the schools years ago were not built as good as they are now. Um, when you leave here, try to put your fist or your foot through one of these walls. Then go down to the middle school, which has drywall, and try to put your fist through that and talk to some of the uh, custodians about how many holes they have to fix. Um, I graduated from Wilmington High School. The enrollment was over 1,200 uh, that particular year for um, 9 through 12. Uh, the new school was built and sized for about 940 students, so our enrollment has gone down. Um, one thing that wasn't mentioned tonight was the fact that land on Salem Street years ago was taken specifically for school purposes. Um, it's written into the deed that that was a purpose that it was taken, and therefore it can't be used for anything other than a school. I haven't heard anybody here tonight uh, talk about um, even that as an option. Um, but I did want to thank Mr. Allen for bringing up and giving a shout out to the seniors for the sacrifices and the contributions that they've made to our town. However, I did want to point out that in about the last 40 or 50 years, not one single senior housing project has been built. And if there's any seniors watching this meeting tonight, you ought to get pretty upset about that, especially if you're being forced out of town or um, you're a kid of a senior who's contributed to this town who now lives in Peabody or some of these other places that have senior housing. Okay. And thank so you, Mr. McDonald. The other, thank you. Do you have a uh, final question? Yeah, I have a final statement. Okay. Um, the one thing that wasn't discussed tonight was the fact that with this debt exclusion and with the 30 year um, financial impact on people, no one's really talked about the other things that our town is trying to uh, build, such as a fire substation, um, water line replacements, sewer line replacements, unforeseen things that happen. And so, um, my question to Mr. Slagle is, um, Proposition 2.5 allows for the tax levy to be increased 2.5% and not over that. So um, when you have a debt exclusion um, or you have other projects that come online in town, um, that impacts and that has direct correlation to the Proposition 2.5 tax levy so in all honesty can you clarify or can you can you confirm if what I'm saying is true that um, if the town wants other projects and um, the two and a half percent increase in our tax levy can't handle that those other projects would have to go for a debt exclusion or override wouldn't they Thank you for that question. I'm going to give you the opportunity to answer it, and then we're going to move to the next person, Mr. Slick. Sure. I, that, that's uh, actually pretty speculative. I, I know that, for instance, the, the town hall and the, and the um, senior center projects were sizable projects, but they went forward without re requiring Prop 2 and F override. So, you know, we'll have to come back when this project comes forward and figure out what the impacts are at that time. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm you. glad you did mention that. Excuse me, Mr. McDonald. Excuse me, it, sir. I just, I'm going I just to give wanna... someone else an opportunity, okay? Would anybody else like to make a follow-up question? 
Now's the time. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. So, Mr. Okay, Slager, so then in that case, to, we are going to move to the wanna, next I portion. Just a clarification. We're gonna, just a clarification. Well, Mr. McDonald, I've given you plenty of time. And if you do have further questions, we have ample opportunity. We have a forum tomorrow night, another meeting. Is and that, there's an is email that a address. Zoom forum? No, tomorrow night is in person and via Zoom. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's both. Can, can the town commit that all, any future forums will all be in person rather than the Zoom crap? Thank you for your comments. No, it's a question. Uh, it's not a comment. We're going to move to the next portion of this, which is I want to take the opportunity to thank uh, you all for being here. Uh, certainly, I know the night is getting late, but there is one thing that I want to point out that I think we can all agree on. We'll have, there'll be a lot of debate over this over the next uh, hours, days, weeks, months. But I really want to give a big public shout out uh, to our public buildings department, to our DPW, to our school staff, teachers who do an amazing job you know, working with what they have and the magic that goes on in the classrooms, which is about to start in just a few days. And so I don't want to lose sight of that. I, like all of you, am appreciative of all the work that our public buildings uh, department does to get our buildings ready for school and so that our kids can have an awesome experience here in Wilmington. Um, and so I want to give them a shout out here tonight. Um, as was said, we have a meeting tomorrow night, 630 at the high school. We encourage everybody to attend. That is the school building committee a meeting. The agenda is posted online. As was mentioned, it's in person. And I believe there's also a hybrid option if you want to, want to tune in that way. Uh, the website uh, it was up on the screen. We'll put it up hopefully one more time. If you have questions, you have thoughts, there's an email address that's been dedicated to this. So another opportunity. The uh, mentee meter is up until tomorrow. We encourage you to do that. And again, big shout out to our friends at WCTV who record all of our meetings and do a great job turning it around and getting them online. So if you've missed tonight, you have the opportunity to, to scroll through and, and watch this portion of the meeting. So with that, I really appreciate, I wanna give Chairman Fenley the opportunity to uh, adjourn officially, just so you're off the hook. Thank you, the school committee is adjourned. I'm going to move uh, for a five minute recess here for the board so the room can clear out. You're welcome to stay. Uh, <laughs> but thank you all for coming. Is there a, a motion to uh, a recess? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Thank you very much. We'll be in recess for a few minutes. We'll be right back. Thank you.
set? Great. Thank you. Thank you all. We're gonna, I'm going to call the meeting back to order at 9.34 p.m. Thank you to those who stuck around. We uh, have concluded our appointments, and we are moving in to communications at this time. Mr. Slake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first communication is uh, a memorandum from uh, the town manager regarding the reuse of town buildings. As uh, folks are aware, um, uh, there have been uh, multiple meetings at which this was discussed. Um, uh, after speaking to the chair, we thought it made the most sense to um, put forward in, in combination with the recommendation that I made at the last meeting, um, the, the uh, uh, proposal that was actually voted on by uh, the board um, in its meeting earlier this year, uh, in January, I believe. Um, so the j just to kind of uh, lay it out specifically without reading the full memo, which I'm sure the members of the board have, um, the, the, the two options I believe would be on the table would be to, to task the Permanent Building Committee with overseeing the building reuse project, as, uh, as we discussed last time, or uh, appoint a separate reuse committee that would include uh, a select board member, Public Works Director, Superintendent of Public Buildings, a Historical Commission member, a Commission on Disabilities member, and um, five residents, one appointed by each select board member. And so those were the two options. And I did kind of put the, the charge that we would potentially send to that committee, whatever the, the board chooses. Thank you, Mr. Slagle. And, and so I'll just jump out here in front. It, it's my estimation that we ought to just, uh, and, and certainly, whatever the will of the board is. But at this point, uh, I'm prepared, uh, with your support, uh, to, to just aim for the end of September for folks to be able to reach out to somebody that they'd like to appoint to the committee. And so I know that having done this before, it takes time. You've got to get a hold of the person. They have to commit. And then you've got to report back uh, to the staff. And so we can get them on the agenda to be approved as part of the committee. So I'd like to make it a goal for the end of September to reach out to somebody that you'd like to appoint. If you want to appoint somebody from the Permanent Building Committee, you're welcome to do that. If you want to appoint uh, someone else, you're welcome to do that. I think one of the things I think is worth pointing to is the charge of the committee, which would include getting feedback from other committees, including the Historical Committee, uh, and uh, getting community input, uh, and I would imagine input from the Permanent Building Committee. So I think and that's just my suggestion because we've been trying to navigate this now for a couple weeks. So I'd like to put it on the agenda for the end of September if we're able to. And I recognize that one member is not here. Uh, but if we're able to appoint uh, whoever, whomever you want to appoint as your appointee, if you could get in touch with that person over the next couple weeks, uh, that would be great. And then we could move forward. I do want to add kind of what you said earlier, Mr. Slagle, is that this would be one stop on the train. If, if anything was to be repurposed, reused, reassigned, it would be the, the committee would, that we form would look at it, simply make a recommendation to the board, who in conjunction, if, if it gets a little trickier if it's a school property, right, the school committee gets involved, they'd have to turn it over. And then it would ultimately go to town meeting with a recommendation of the town manager if we were to sell anything off, and I'm not <coughs> suggesting anything, I'm just laying it out there. So this would be a multi-step process if, before anything happens. And I think that would be in partnership with the Historical Committee, Permanent Building Committee, and the community. So I'll leave it at that. I'm interested in your feedback. That's what I'm thinking. Just, just Mr. Chair, so I'm going to be a little bit of devil's advocate here. Um, I, I'm not in favor of this, but I will do with the will of the board, um, no problem. I think there's been a little, and this is, this is laid out great. It's how we do committees. I agree, no problem at all. However, I think that some residents may have, um, and I could be wrong in this, but I think some residents think it's going to be kind of open who wants to join this committee as opposed to the selectmen selecting people. Um, 
I don't mean this to sound crass or anything, but you know, anytime we tend to select people, we get you know negative feedback and all that starts. Um, would there be any room to have people apply to this as opposed to the select board members us uh, appointing, or perhaps we could, if one of the members so chooses, could we defer and say, I'd rather put my spot out to the town and let them apply for it? Is there any, and if it's a no, it's a no. I just no. would like to bring that up. I think it's a good question. I don't think there's anything that prohibits you on however you arrive at your appointee. You know, uh, I think that's up to you, right? I mean, others might have somebody in mind. They may have been approached by absolutely, somebody that they absolutely. Think is fit for it. And yeah. I think it's up to individual members on how they arrive Okay. At their okay. Well, I'd just like to put it out there now that I'm not going to appoint somebody. I'm going to put it out to the residents. So if anybody is interested in having a seat on this committee, they can email me through my email on the um, uh, town email and, you know, let me know their interests, why, and what makes them suitable for this position. And I will consider anybody that comes forth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Uh, so what we're, what this committee is going to be comprised of is, as stated here, one select board member, the public works director, the superintendent of public buildings, one historical commission member, one commission on disabilities member, and five residents. Is that what our committee is comprised of? I think that's the recommendation that the manager has made, outlined. I mean, I think in the past we've good, we've committed to making a committee, and uh, if that's what people want to do, and, and I can just be clear. This is actually what the what the the board of selectmen voted right. on in January. Right. Was that was that uh, that composition? So I didn't I didn't okay. alter it. Okay. What what I'd like to do is is that if I'd like to be the select board member nominee if that's the will of the board, but I'd like to put myself out for that position. I appreciate that. Uh, I think in fairness, we ought to take these all up at the yep. same time and uh, great. recognize that we have one member who's not here. Um, I do appreciate your willingness to step up. Um, in my mind, it kind of makes sense to appoint all these people on one night. We're not piecemealing it together. Yeah. So I throw the end of September out there just as we got to put the goalpost somewhere and maybe, you know, I guess in a month's time from now, so we can kind of be reasonable that you got to, you know, yep. one member's already indicated she's soliciting uh, people. So. You know, I'm open to suggestions on that. Now, if I may also, Mr. Chair, is that there is a form that I know we've used for other committees. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be fair to say have people submit that form? And even if it's to the individual selectman or do you select board member or is yeah. it you're just looking for that somebody can make a recommendation? Hey, I, I'd like to appoint, you know, <clears throat> Sally Smith. I, I just was just going to suggest if that's the way that the board would like us to proceed, we can post it on the website and solicit the volunteer information and then provide the information to all the board members and then you will all have it and you can choose to decide to appoint someone from that group or from a, a, a different committee if you, if you choose. That way everybody gets the same information. Yeah, cause I'm just thinking that, you know, if we had, just for argument's sake, if you had 10 people that wanted to be on the board, and so let's say, just for argument's sake, that three only talk to you, Mr. Chair, and obviously you're picking from one of the three, and, and when it never came out that one of one of the other select board members could have picked one of the other two that may have gone to one select board member. So I kind of like the openness of you know having people just go into that portal, if you will, and then maybe it, it may end up that when we come to vote, hey, I you know, I wanted to vote for Sally Smith, well. Mr. Kyra already took that position. You know, who's my second, you know, who's my ranking? Who's my second choice out of all the applicants? You can also as appoint someone you want. It doesn't okay. have to be an applicant. And, and as I mentioned to Ms. Maselli, that's your prerogative. If that's how you want to arrive at your appointee, that's certainly up to you. I do want to be mindful that, you know, we're not going to be able to deliberate yeah, no. offline everything we talk about no, no, I'm, right here. I'm not suggesting you're suggesting otherwise, yeah. but. Um, that could get into a little logistical. Uh, uh, I, I would suggest that what we would probably do is solicit the names of the people that, that the board wants to appoint so we could put them in the agenda. So we would know before that meeting. Right. Right. That's, that's the, what we've done in the past. So the, you're welcome to do that, Mr. West. I, I'm very comfortable appointing a resident myself. Yep. Uh, but however you arrive, you know, at your, 
conclusions if it goes up to you. Okay. And, and again, if you know, same as that, Ms. Pacelli had said, I would say that you know, in my case, I would say that you know, send me an email and and let me know what you think, you know, what your qualifications are, and we can go from there. And at least that would be my appointment. But so, yeah. thank you, Mr. Harris. Mr. Chair, uh, to regarding the makeup of the committee, I know that we've always been very aware of uh, when we create a committee, whether it's the rink committee or whatever it might be, the economic development committee, we, we try to make it an odd number. So I'm surprised to see that it's an even number of 10. Mm. Um, and that may not matter uh, because it's up to the board. Ultimately, the board of selectmen will make that final determination on yes. the reuse uh, of the project. But I can't Recall and, and maybe you're correct, Mr. Slagle, that this is the the way we did the makeup. But I know we've always talked to to keep it on the odd side, uh, so that we don't have a five to five vote and we have you know uh, a five to four vote. But it, you know, I just thought I'd point that out if that matters to the board or not. Uh, it may not, because like I said, ultimately it's going to come back to the board of selectmen, uh, which is an odd number. Uh, not odd people, an odd number, uh, <laughs> that will make that ultimate determination. Thank you, Ms. Carr. I think that's a good point, too. I mean, if we had to arrive at a, an odd number, which is ideal for these types of committees, just in case there is a divide, you know, I'm almost comfortable uh, removing the select board member. It's ultimately mm -hmm. going to come back to us. That's we can true. make this committee nine by taking one of us out of it. Do it. Now, I don't want to <laughs> insult you, Mr. West, uh, but that would be my suggestion if we were going to move I think the one that we didn't have on the list, if I'm not mistaken, was the Commission on Disabilities member. I don't recall talking about the Commission on Disabilities. I think Gary brought that one up, actually. Yeah, this, yeah. yeah th this is literally just from the minute. So I, yeah. I took the... Okay. I took the, the and just one more... Sure, I was going to say, with the select board member being on there, I know we already have some boards that, you know, all of us are on at least one board, some on multiple boards. And I know you just offered, but I'm just saying my initial thought was another board that is somebody going to sit on it where we already have vacancies with no select board member on other ones. So, and again, I'm not going back. I know this is what we talked about. I'm just saying to the point, but. No, I get it. I think yeah. the hope is we can get this hammered out tonight. Yeah. So I no, to I agree. I, I think we should, you know, move forward with our appointments, however we, sh we choose to do them, um, you know. I'm for that. So, uh, Do we need a vote? Uh, not necessarily, um, because uh, this is just a memo. We've already kind of voted that we were going to yeah. form this committee. And now we're kind of just uh, hammering out the details of what it's going to look like. Right. Anybody else have thoughts, suggestions, objections? And I regret that Mr. DuPont was not here for this, but I don't think we should. If he's for the minutes, I would, yeah. I would go by this. And at the last meeting, Mr. De Palma's concern was um, making sure that the school commission. I do agree with that. All right. Is so. Does any objection to trying to arrive at your appointee by the end of September, which I think we meet September twenty something? Yes. Yeah, Anybody no, have an objection no. to that? Is that not enough time? Twenty third. No. Over I'm okay with that. Now. So, just to be clear, if you. However you arrive at your appointee, I would relay that to the staff, right? Yep. Beverly, town manager's office, directly. Yep. They would then uh, compile that list, which would be taken up uh, at the end of September. Now, in the meantime, you can't get a hold of somebody, you can't get somebody to commit, please indicate that to the manager Absolutely. so we can be alerted. And we already know who B, C, and I guess uh, D, the Historical Commission will have to meet and appoint somebody yep. that will have to be on their agenda and discussed in public. Uh, Commission on Disabilities will have to do the same. I don't know if they have a quorum. We have a lot of vacancies here. We'll have to, reach out. We'll have to reach out. find out there. And there will be five residents, and we'll go from there. And then, uh, okay. Did you forget about A? How did we eliminate A? I threw it out there to eliminate A. It didn't yeah. get a lot of traction. Okay. I uh, I propose getting rid of A to keep a nine-member board. It's going to come back, so we're looking for input from a subcommittee. 
to give us a recommendation. I think it makes sense if we were looking to get rid of one person. I it's agree. Not, not personal here thing. No. Any of us, it doesn't make sense to have us on. They're going to make a recommendation to us. I agree. I don't. Yeah, we're going to step on your toes. I appreciate your willingness to step up. Yeah, and I, just to follow up on that recommendation piece, it's obviously non-binding. Just in case anybody was, yeah. was yeah. concerned, that the, the, this committee is a is a subcommittee that can make the recommendation to the board of selectmen, and they can choose to do what they wish with that recommendation. It wouldn't be binding on them. Clear to folks. I mean, I'm I'm okay with that, with with eliminating the select board member, but we do have a select board member on many of our committees, the senior citizens, the seniors building committee, the school and town admin building, the economic uh, committee, uh, uh, commission on disabilities. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, MSBA. I think yeah. 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 Well, I mean, to that point, I would just respond by saying, like, tonight's a clear example. We have representation on the MSBA, but we are not taking any action. The MSBA does not require a select board to take a vote on the options for the school to move forward, right? This is a little bit different in which we would be responsible for making the decision of what went forth here in town. I'm not arguing with you, Steve, but I'm just you know pointing out the fact that you are correct. We have appointees on other committees, but the mission is a little bit different. This is a short-term, as we hope it be, short-term yeah. mission in which they would come to a, uh, decision that would be recommended to us in the near future. And this may be end up being a longer term commitment. Perhaps. Uh, the only reason why I say that is because if the school goes forward with whatever proposal, we may be looking at vacant buildings on the school side that would get decommissioned, or potentially decommissioned back to the town that would be, that as it was said earlier, that they would form a committee to figure out what the next step of these buildings are. Would be. Point of order. Um, I just want a point of order, Mr. Um, Chairman. No, thank you. Uh, the point of order on? is um, having Excuse people me. on here Excuse on the me, committee sir. that are paid employees and a conflict of interest. That's all I want to say. Thank you, but I'm going to kindly ask you refrain. Any other suggestion, thoughts up here? I want to make sure we get this right. This is usually, mm -hmm. full disclosure, this is one of the ones we get a lot of criticism on. We appoint somebody, somebody's happy, somebody's mad. Mm -hmm. And that's why it may, it may appear that we're taking a little longer on this than, mm -hmm. but having lived through this a number yep. of times, it usually doesn't go over well. But if, we're gonna do the best we can. Yeah, no, no, if, uh, if uh, someone on the board wants to uh, serve in the committee, I suppose they can appoint themselves. Uh, we're all residents, so there's no right. reason why you could. And I do think it needs to be an odd number, though. I think that's I, important. I agree. So I do want to kind of, I want to close the circle on this one. I, I want to make sure we're walking out of here. With I say we remove clear. the select board person. That way it's a nine-person committee. And if somebody on this board wants to serve on the board, they can appoint themselves. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. And I'm not advocating for that, by the no, way. No, 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 no. But, uh, I think uh, it's, but I'm it's just pointing fair. that out. But so. if they want, you know. I don't think they should. All right. So does any, do you want to, we have voted on this. So yep. do you want to make that in the form of a motion? It is appropriate. We are covered here. Yep. That votes may be taken under the course for uh, communications. I'll Not make a motion to remove the select board member as a part of the reuse committee. So it is a nine person committee. Okay. Is there a second? A second for the. Purpose of discussion. Seconded by Mr. Kyra. Discussion. Is that eliminating the self appointment of a select board member? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so your motion is also suggesting the prohibiting someone from yes. appointing themselves. Yes. Not a good look, I don't think. Bill second? Yes. Further discussion? Disclosure: I have no intention of appointing myself. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. No. All right. No. We have a motion and a second. There's no other discussion. We'll call for the vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion passes three to one. Okay. So, Mr. Slago will remove item A under num section two. So now we have a nine odd number committee, all residents and employees of the town. Uh, and we're hoping at the end of September meeting, yeah. we'll have a list to vote mm -hmm. on, to finalize the committee, 
That way they can be sworn in and begin their work um, as they deem appropriate. And we'll reach out to the two. So the two committees, I see that the committees have been patiently waiting, so I will recognize, if you don't mind, Mrs. Smith moving to the uh, microphone. And we know who you are, but if you don't mind identifying well, yourself. I'll do it just for formality. Bonnie Smith, 30 Marion Street, but I'm here representing the uh, Historical Commission. And with me is Joe Jackson and Christine Johnston, other members of our Historical Commission. I just want to thank you. I was going to be up here like pleading for you to change <laughs> the uh, the original uh, topic of just having the, public, uh, the uh, Permanent Buildings Department do it. But um, I don't have to do that. Thank you so much for reconsidering the, the makeup of the committee, and we appreciate it. And really look work. Uh, we really look forward to working with everyone on um, this. And I do see it as a longer term committee. I think, because there's yeah, because there's going to be other buildings coming up, not just the ones replaced by, uh, or emptied by, the school, senior center and the oh yeah the school department town meeting. So there's going to be. Could be right. I've been wrong before, so most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't mind, uh, you'll work with the town uh, administration to schedule a meeting of your committee so you can take this up. Yes, we uh, have a meeting uh, in September. Our first meeting is we start up meeting in September. Um, 12th, I think it Great. is. So we Come will take a vote as to who the representative would be on the committee. Awesome. That way, hopefully, the hope is we can take it up at the end of September. Thank you. Thanks for your patience Thanks. here tonight. Appreciate you. Okay. Everybody comfortable with this? Moving yeah. on? All right. Gladly turn the page on that. Mr. Slagle. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the next communication is. Um, I, uh, Lavino and yeah, so that's the wrong one. So this is a, a, a letter from Mr. Levine or, or uh, to uh, Mr. Levino um, uh, regarding uh, his uh, appointment to uh, fill a vacant seat on the finance committee. The term to expire on uh, in 2027. So and then. Second uh, appointment of uh, Mr. Scott Neville to a, uh, a seat on the uh, a vacant seat of the finance committee. These are both reappointments. Um, they were taken up by uh, the appointing authority for the FinCom um, uh, at a meeting, I believe, uh, late last month. August 1st. August 1st. So. That the next um, Mr. Mr. Chair okay. was there. Uh, there was another meeting I think on August first. Was there another appointment that was made? There was a vacancy on that. Uh, yeah, my understanding is that is the committee did not make another appointment to the to the vacancy. Were there any applicants for that? Uh, I believe there were two applicants for that. Um, uh, and the 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 committee made the determination. I don't want to speak out of turn. Uh, the, the, the committee can speak for themselves, obviously. But my understanding is that they made a determination to not appoint either of the applicants um, to that seat, and to keep the keep the request open for, for a new applicant. So, just uh, full disclosure: as a member of the subcommittee, um, we did have two applications for a vacancy on the finance committee. I nominated one; it failed for lack of a second. The person motion uh, did not carry. And um, I am very pleased that the second candidate uh, will be taken up later on in this evening uh, under an economic development uh, consideration, which was this individual's first choice on their form, which was previously mentioned by Mr. West, the volunteer uh, form. So just to clarify that there were, there was a nomination, but the motion failed. Uh, the next communication, um, Mr. Chair, is um, a request to the board from uh, the 4th of July committee. Um, a request that the, uh, the board, pursuant to its authority, uh, limit, uh, impose a restriction prohibiting hawkers, peddlers, transient vendors, and temporary transient businesses from conducting business within one half mile of the town common in Wilmington High School campus 
during the 2024 Wilmington Fall Fest, which was uh, scheduled for September 28th, the rain date of October 5th. Great, thank you. We have a number of board to consider items to take up this evening. Mr. Slagle. Um, number six, board to consider a request from the Wilmington Rotary to use Rotary Park on Saturday, August 24th, 2024, from 8 o'clock a.m. to 12 o'clock p.m. for the Ice Bucket Challenge to benefit the Angel Fund of Wakefield. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you very much and appreciate the work of the Rotary Club. Great cause. To chair number seven, the board to consider a request of Lisa A. Stokes for the residents of Herald Avenue to have a neighborhood block party on Sunday, August 25th, 2024, from 4 o'clock p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Is there a second? So, second. Seconded by Mr. Kyra. Thank you. Is there a discussion? We're hoping that it's a really good time <laughs> and good weather. Call for the vote. All those in favor? It is unanimous. One of these days, we're going to get an invitation to one of these things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm starting to take a hint after all these years. <laughs> uh, all right. Mr. Chair, number eight, a board to consider the request of uh, Lear, Lisa Ferretra, uh, read the disclosure in accordance with Chapter 268A, Section 20B, relative to employment with Wilmington Department of Public Works. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded. Is there discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, a board to consider, uh, number nine, a board to consider authorizing the town manager to execute the land damages agreements and right of entry, read the Massachusetts Department of Transportation's project 608051 in Wilmington. Ruburn, this is Route 38 Main Street project. Thank you. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Kyra. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. It's unanimous. I want to pause briefly. I believe I made a mistake. Thank you, Beverly, for catching it. I want to jump back to 5C. We have a letter from Pat Giroux. Okay. And I think we need to take a vote on the Hawk and Peddlers yeah. 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 transient for the fall fest. Yeah. Make apologies. a motion. I apologize. I should have mentioned that. Too. Make a motion to approve the request. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second it. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? It's unanimous this time. Can I have this put aside? Forget you at the end. Well, <laughs> and you are invited to fall we'll fest. We'll see. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your fall fest invitation. Was Wait till you see what I have under announcements written down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're back on track, I hope. Uh, the next board to consider, Mr. Slagle. Yes, uh, board to consider number 10. Uh, board to consider the request from Idel al Kataba adds ice cream to obtain a Hawk and Peddler license to sell ice cream. Okay, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and second. Is there any discussion? Is this the first time this individual is coming before us? Is it? Slagle? I believe so, right? Yeah. yeah. And we have recommendations. Yeah. Positive recommendations? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. We have recommendations from uh, 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 positive recommendation uh, from uh, the police chief uh, and from the board of health. Great. Thank you. I, I just thought it was odd and picture was black and dark. Uh, must be shy, I guess. That might be the photocopy. I actually yeah. think yeah, I actually think it's just a really bad photocopy. Yeah. <laughs> it's intended to I think it's an anti fraud measure actually. Mm -hmm. All right. It's clearly late. The jokes are getting really bad. <laughs> Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? I think I already made the yeah, motion. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My apologies. Frank second. Any other right. discussion? No. Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? That's unanimous. All right. 
Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Board of Consider number 11, uh, Board of Consider the request of Michael and Don Namo to light the town common gold during September 2024 in recognition of Child Cancer Awareness Month. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Kyra. Is there discussion? Discussion? Please. I just wanted to see if I could also request that uh, this board wear an item of gold during the month of September meetings for childhood awareness. I think that's a very strong tradition of the board. Thank you for reminding us. Yep. Thank you. We'll put a notice in the packet. It's custom that we do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion. We have a second. We had great discussion. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you. Really appreciate those who are making that happen. Mr. Chair, board to consider number 12. Uh, board to consider the request of Janine Fitzpatrick, uh, Wilmington High School Boys Soccer Boosters, to use a municipal parking lot on Middlesex Avenue for a fundraising car wash on Sunday, September 7th, 2025. From 9 a.m. to 12 o'clock p.m., the rain date would be Sunday, September 14th. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? If I could just make a very brief comment. I thought the date was incorrect, and I was wrong. I thought it was they were requesting for September 2024. In fact, they're requesting for September 2025 because they're that far ahead in their schedule. Wanted to make that clear to anybody who thought I read that wrong. <laughs> I hope that the town hall was that far ahead in this. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if, if in fact there's a, an issue at that particular time, we should uh, allow them to have the uh, car wash at the public buildings where we are doing all the others. Uh, it, you know, we may be up and running there. We may be fine just in case. Oh, say what? I'm just looking at the letter. The letter says Sunday, September 7th, 2024, with the rain date of Sunday, September 14th, 2024. So it is this yeah, September. Yeah. I have the 14th as a Saturday. Yeah. It should this yeah, coming year, so that was so. Yeah, so the letter is actually incorrect. Yeah. Okay. It is the car rest request for fundraiser okay, 2025. You. So, yeah. Okay. The, the just want to, just want to we did double check that because I thought it was. Yeah. A, okay. Uh, All right. So we have time to figure it out. That's for sure. <laughs> the 7th of September this year is already booked. Yeah. 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 This yeah. is, this is, it is. This is the next 2025. 2025. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, board to consider the appointment of Jacob Girwar to the Economic Development Subcommittee. Great. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. And a second for discussion real quick? Of course. Uh, I just want to let you know, let the board know that uh, I met with Mr. Uh, Gawar, Girwar, excuse me, and I think he's a great candidate for the position. Excellent choice. And I appreciate his willingness to volunteer. As I mentioned earlier, it was his first choice on his volunteer form to be appointed to this. So very pleased that he's willing to do that and that we can make it happen. Any other discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, since we're on uh, the board to consider for appointment of the Economic Development Committee, uh, and this is uh, an item that's uh, not reasonably, reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance of the meeting, I would like to place the name of Joe Maselli uh, as my appointee to the Economic Development Committee. Is that in the form of a motion? Yes. Is there a second? I'm going to abstain. Just curious if we can do that. I thought we couldn't vote like that. I think the gentleman indicated that this was not anticipated 48 hours in advance. Do you want to elaborate on? Yeah, I mean that I had an opportunity to discuss this uh, appointment with Mr. Maselli uh, prior uh, after the agenda was put out. But if we want to wait another month for me to bring his name up again, I, we can do that as well. No, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the appointment. I just just on a procedure note, it just struck me a little odd. That's all. Uh, 
I don't know, maybe the town manager has a, a thought on it. It should we wait? So I, I'm taking it on the board to consider for the Economic Development Committee, same line item. Yeah, so the, 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 the only open meeting law issue would be whether or not it, it's, it's kind of a two-part task, which is the first is, was it not reasonably anticipated before the agenda was done? And the second is, is it an emergency such that putting it off to the next meeting would defeat the purpose? So if you believe that putting it off until the next meeting in September would defeat the purpose of the, of the, of the ruling, then it falls within that exception. If you think that we could effectively take it up at the next at the next meeting of the board, then it's probably more appropriate for open meeting purposes to put it off to the next. That's meeting. fine. Cool. That's fine. So I'll withdraw my motion until the next uh, September meeting. Okay. So if we could just make a note internally that we'll take up that appointment at the September 9th meeting. Thank you, Mr. Caron. And again, I'll just go on record that I don't have a problem with. The appointment. I was just just confused by the process. Thank you. Okay. So for the record, that motion was withdrawn, and we are on to uh, our final board to consider. Uh, board to consider the request of Austin Stife Chamber of Commerce to change the date of the Wilmington Town Business Day from Monday, August nineteenth at one o'clock p.m. to Tuesday, September twenty fourth at one o'clock p.m. Is there a Motion. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Call for the vote. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, public comments. Would anyone who has not yet been heard like to speak? Uh, I'll give you a. Uh, you were under uh, your historical hat last time, and now you're as a resident rising. Sure. Sure, then I'll allow it. Mr. Jackson. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that for the idea of uh, building reuse committee, the, the work of the committee could probably use as many people as are willing to sit on the committee. And since no binding votes are likely to be made, they'll just be recommendations. That doesn't seem prudent to preclude people who are interested in sitting on a committee to brainstorm building uh, purposes and put forth recommendations to the Board of Selectmen. So just my thinking, more hands make lighter work in that purpose. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else like to be heard? Good evening, Kevin Mr. McDonald. McDonald. Um, I've been going down to the um, senior center and looking over the fence um, at the new project. And um, the particular week that I went down there, there was no rain. It was pretty much 90 degree weather every single day. And I noticed that in the area of the um, foundation area, there was standing water. Um, my concern is that the senior center is on septic and all those people um, around there are at a higher elevation on septic systems. Um, my concern is that a $38 million building could become a sick building. Um, I went down to the Board of Health and I asked for the septic design for the existing senior center and I was told that the public buildings department would have all the septic system designs for the public buildings which seemed extremely odd and concerning since I was at the Board of Health. Nevertheless, um, I have a few questions on a few other things, but this particular question has to do with testing of the water, that standing water that doesn't go away with a week of 90 degree weather. So Mr. Slate, actually maybe, maybe you're on top of this, Mr. Bendel. Can you tell us if there's been any testing of that standing water to see if it's um, containing septic effluent pathogens or any type of um, um, concerning uh, chemicals that could render this $38 million building a sick building. Mr. McDonald, I don't have any specifics as it relates to that question this evening in front of me, so I don't want to give you bad information, but we'll certainly take your question under advisement. Um, yeah, you typically say that every meeting you're going to take it under advisement, um, but you never get back to us as to what the advisement produces. 
So I think this is kind of um, a concerning issue. Um, the other um, questions that I have, since you receive warrants and you get to review them, uh, regarding the senior center and the t new town hall, uh, can you recall anything on the town warrants for expenditures that would involve extra cost or change orders on any of these buildings? Mr. McDonald, I don't have that figure in front of me here this evening, but I'm happy to take your question under advisement. Yeah. I would also strongly encourage you that if you have questions, that 10 p.m. is not the best place for them, but you're welcome to call from 8.30 to 4.30, where we have a tremendous staff working in all the departments here who are ready to help residents with sincere questions. Well, Mr. Bendel, the way I look at it is this board is supposed to be the representatives of the people. As a matter of fact, this board hired the town manager. So in essence, um, you're really over all the departments being over the manager. So I would actually like you to be a little more proactive and uh, take the initiative to um, address these concerns. I'll take that than, under advisement. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you will. Um, Mr. Bendel, maybe you can tell us um, what ages are considered um, pre-kindergarten? What, what ages would be, um, would fall into that category? With three young children, I'm actually very qualified to answer that question. <laughs> I believe that to be five and under. I believe you can go to kindergarten at five years old. Okay, so pre-kindergarten would be four years old. Kindergarten would be five years old. Correct. I believe the cutoff is September 1st, but okay. I could be wrong. And again, I don't have, okay, I'm not prepared. I wish I was prepared to answer your questions had I been well, you have notified a bunch of kids. by you email have, or phone. You have all these kids, so you're qualified to answer it. So you, I would think that you'd be prepared, but that's all right. So um, that's why I uh, commented earlier that having four-year-olds uh, who are just, you know, trying to learn how to use a crayon in with, um, you know, 11-year-olds uh, fifth grade or, or whatever. So I just don't think it's appropriate to put them in the same school. Um, with regard to tonight's warrants, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Slego, but I thought you told me that the warrants total $11,180,000. Mr. McDonald, I would just kindly ask if you have a question, if you could direct it through the chair, that would be proper procedure, please. Why don't we just have that question that I just asked directed to you? You have a question about the warrants this evening? Yes. Are you on top of it? I am not. Okay. Well, I would think that when you review warrants and you're voting on the warrants, that you'd be on top of it. So oh. my question to you is, when did you receive your warrant expenditure package of $11,180,000? I'm glad you asked because... I take great pride in signing that every week, as do my colleagues, to make sure that all of our hardworking employees get paid for the hard work that they do. And if we don't sign that, then they don't get paid. So I take great pride in making sure that we sign that. So, um, but if you have a question about the totals, we do have the totals. Mr. Slagle, is that correct? $11,180,000? No, it's $11,198,530.03. Any other questions, Mr. McDonald? Comments? Yeah, Mr. Bendel. Um, the employees that you mentioned that you take great pride in being able to pay, um, this board hasn't met for like about a month. So um, the expenditures, has no one gotten paid in a month? Thankfully they have. So if your charge is to review warrants and the warrants are for expenditures, which would include payroll, how do people get paid prior to you reviewing that, and are people getting paid uh, before you authorize that approval? Again, we have a tremendous staff here in the payroll I'm, I'm department asking, and human resources. No, no, let me I'm answer. You asked you. a question, you've had plenty of time. Let me answer. We have a great staff here, human resources, payroll department, make sure that everyone is paid fairly to what they've been entitled to, and it happens without fail, Every week. Correct me if I'm wrong, but everyone gets paid once a week here. That's correct. And we don't want to get in the way of that. Yeah, I wouldn't want you to get in the way of that, but there's supposed to be checks and balances. Correct. And the checks and balances come down to this board reviewing things. And typically, 
I mean, maybe you could just answer the question I asked earlier. When did you get your expenditure package? I'm, I'm sorry, I've lost track of all the questions you've asked. Could you repeat it, please? Uh, let me focus on this one. When did you receive your warrant package that's being mm -hmm. voted on tonight? We receive those weekly. Weekly. So in other words, last Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, when did you receive this package tonight that you're voting on? We always receive the package of the upcoming meeting three days prior, which is usually falls on Friday evening. Okay, good enough. That's, that answers my question. Thank you. So in three days, you were able to review $11,198,000 in expenditures and go through all of that and make sure that there's no errors, there's no one that's being paid twice, no vendors being paid twice, making sure that uh, somebody hasn't hacked into the system. And three days, you really think that that's enough time to review close to $12 million in expenditures? Uh, correct I me don't. if I'm wrong, Bev, but we get that ahead of time, but that's the final tally. We get the totals on Friday. We see it during the week. It's all electronic. Everything is available. And again, I would strongly encourage you to come on and down to town hall 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. We have an awesome staff who will answer your questions. You can call us. You can email us. Mm -hmm. But if this is the way you want to do it, 10.30, I'll... Nope, I actually have a better suggestion that would um, allow me to never have to come here and ask this question again. And that would be to um, uh, mimic or copy or take uh, into consideration the fact that, um, say, Newburyport, they have what's called an open checkbook where every single expenditure, every person in that town could go online and see every single dollar that was paid out. And so the advantage to that is when you're busy with your children and you get these warrants three days before the total $12 million, which is supposed to be um, checks and balances and oversight to make sure that people get paid. Uh, you can have the, all the residents being able to uh, have their eyes on it. And since this isn't a private club of yours, this is a public entity, um, I think that would be in the best interest of the town. To well, I appreciate to... your comments. And no, I do not run a club, but I am running this meeting. So we're going to move on to the next yeah, agenda you, you, item. You, Thank you really for your comments. And I hope so, you have a great rest of the night. Yeah, you too. Next up, we have announcements. Any announcements? I have one. I'll start. Oh, Mr. West, go ahead. Well, uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to congratulate a few different res a few different organizations that have uh, had some uh, public um, uh, days, you know, like the police and all of the staff at the Silver Lake that did the beach day that came up a few weeks ago, uh, which we attended. The um, library did their end of year program at the uh, town common and that was a great event it, it got a little rainy at the end but it was nice nice to see the you know the kids and stuff like that and uh, and finally again a shout out to uh, the police for their police night out you know the police night out on Rotary Park that was a great event you know a lot of people got to see a lot of different types of policing not just our Wilmington police but a lot of specialty police for, for different organizations Federal Reserve and and other towns and you know in, in a great and again it's anytime the kids especially get to see and talk to our law enforcement officials i think it's a great thing so i wanted to give a shout out to everybody involved in the beach day the library program and the uh police night out absolutely great great announcements and i would agree i would only add that i, I would the, our fire department our dpw uh, and all the other departments that contributed to the wonderful Sorry. national night out absolutely any other announcements? I just want to wish my colleague, Mr. Kyra, a happy birthday this week. Is that correct? That huh. is correct. All right. 28, 29. <laughs> happy birthday. And uh, finally, I want to wish everybody, uh, I hope the summer keeps going for a long time, but we are <laughs> headed back to school, so I want to wish all the students and staff a wonderful school year. And uh, I hope it's a really good one for everyone. Any new business? I just had a question. Uh, a couple of residents had come up to me, and this was in a packet about the uh, uh, 
uh, white goods, mattresses, CIT recycling going up from $10 to $25. A couple of residents, they called me up and they asked me, they said, well, if it's going up to $25 and the, the town is getting $10, what are we doing with that money? Because it seems like before we had, the, the treasurer was, was taking the time to put out the sticker and stuff like that. Is that still the process or is it still just, or is it going to be a call to Kinsala and we're out of the out of the loop? Oh, well, Mr. West, I appreciate that question. I think it's a good one. But I do, as you mentioned earlier, I just want to ask you, was that an item not reasonably anticipated 48 hours before the meeting? I'd like an agenda right up for next meeting. Sure. And, you know, Mr. Slagle, if you have it off the top that. of your head, do you have an answer for the gentleman? No, just to, just to provide uh, for the public, um, uh, this would be through Casella, yes. However, as, as requested, there's still going to be um, uh, uh, allowances made for eligibility of folks who, who aren't able to, to uh, interface with Casella and, and, uh, and uh, work it out that way. We still have a, a kind of an emergency way to ha have it done. So can we put out notice of that? Or can we uh, add it to the next agenda? Absolutely. Any other new business? Hearing none, we'll move to important dates. Mr. Slagle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so through October 6th, we have the Farmer's Market of the Town Common on Sundays from 10 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, a reminder has been said several times this evening. Tomorrow evening, August 20th, the School Building Committee meeting will be at 6.30 p.m. That is uh, both in person and via hybrid uh, uh, participation at uh, the high school. Um, August 24th is the last day to register to vote in the state primary. The town clerk's office will be open that date from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, also, August 4th, we'll have early voting in the town hall auditorium from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So in this, this location, we'll have early voting uh, on August 24th and then from August 26th to August 30th, we'll have early voting of the Town Hall Auditorium from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Uh, September 2nd, Labor Day, uh, town offices will be closed, celebration of the holiday. Uh, September 3rd will be the state primary election. Polls open at 7 o'clock a.m., uh, close at 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, and September 9th, uh, the next meeting of the select board here in Town Hall, room 9 at 7 o'clock p.m. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Slagle. And tonight, to conclude, as our salute to service, tonight is going out to Mr. Kenneth Kane. Mr. Kane was an Air Force veteran who honorably served his country from 1967 to 1971. He served as an ele electronic warfare officer where he made his, uh, the rank of captain. He was awarded the National Defense Service Medal, Air and Space Outstanding Unit Award, and the combat uh, with a combat device the Vietnam Service Medal, Air Medal, and two Oak Leaf Clusters, among many other awards. With the help of the Veterans Service Department, Ken was awarded the Orange Heart Medal for being affected by Agent Orange. Mm. His daughter, Karen, pinned the medal on Ken at the Veterans End of the Summer event last year. Unfortunately, Ken passed away earlier this year, and the, all of us, and especially the Department of Veterans Services, will miss him very much. Uh, in the spirit of Ken, we want to plug that very event that's coming up this year, uh, which will, they'll be honoring him, which is Friday, September 20th at noon at the KFC uh, for a veterans event. Space is limited, so if you want to make a reservation to attend, please call the Veterans Service Office. They're at 978-694-2040. Reach out to them via email at the office. So having said that, uh, tonight to Mr. Kane and to his, our condolences to his family, we salute him and we thank him for his service. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank second. You. Is there a second? Seconded. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Good night, everyone. Thank you for coming. <laughs>